just another beautiful Sunday. I was bragging to Nanny Emma about my wonderful adventure. Goodness, that's incredible. Weren't you scared? Of course not. Dad taught me. Why are you still here, Amy? Get ready for your piano lesson. Oh, it's Mom. Again. She rushed in, snatched the phone out of my hand, said, Go now or I'll delete all these videos. Okay, just delete them. Nothing you do could ever make me care more about those noise-making logs. Then I left to my room. Always ballet and piano and violin. What kind of mother forces her kid to do things they don't like? Ugh, I won't back down this time. I have my videos all backed up online anyway. She can't control me. What? Huh? What else? I turn around to see Mom drop to her knees. No, no, it can't be. Just this morning, my husband was still... Dad had suffered a stroke on a trip to survey a gem mine, and they couldn't reach the hospital in time to save him. How could that be? He's not only my dad, he's my bestest friend. I bet the news is just as hard to deal with for my sister Briona, as she was always the one who went on business expeditions with him. He's the best dad we could ever ask for. But he's gone, and it felt like Emma and Briona were the only people who really loved me now. Just last week, Dad was sitting here, next to me. Darling, it's not good for you to just sit home and wallow. Why don't you get out of here for a few days? And go where? Next week, your sister is going on a trip to a new mine. You can tag along. I'm sure she'd enjoy the company. I don't know. I don't like business trips. I'll bet you can make time for some adventures while you're there. There's bound to be hiking and things you like to do. Since when does mom support any of my hobbies? She really must not want me around, huh? If that's what she wants. Okay then, sure. We were already running late for our flight when Briona realized she had forgotten her passport. I offered to stay with her, but she insisted that at least one of us should make the flight. She assured me she'd be back in time for the next flight and we'd see each other soon, so I hugged her goodbye and headed toward the gate. While waiting for Brianna to arrive, I've already booked myself a skydiving session, as recommended by the hotel's receptionist. This thing is right up my alley, but the weather doesn't look too good. Are you sure this is normal? 100%. That's what makes it special here. People come from all over just for these winds. This is what you call extreme sports, isn't it? Yeah, right. Bring it on. So on the count of three, I was free-falling. It was an unrivaled exhilaration. The ultimate thrill! Until I deployed my parachute. Instead of gently floating to the ground, I was carried away by gust after gust of wind. Then I blacked out. I slowly opened my eyes. What has happened? Am I in heaven now? I look around to see nothing but a beach, framed by a dense forest. This place was clearly deserted. Maybe not so deserted. There I saw a group of tribal people, dressed in strange clothes, wielding spears, I tried to move closer to get a better look, but game over. They all turned to my direction. I ducked down immediately, but their footsteps grew louder. I held my breath, wishing for a miracle. Oh no, this is definitely my end. But unexpectedly, the hand pushed me down further into the bushes, as if they were trying to hide me. I looked up and saw it was a man talking to the other in a native language. The talking stopped. It seemed like the rest had left. Thank you. Thank you so much, handsome mister. Sorry for bothering you. I'm gonna get going now. I may have let you off, but the others won't. These people are aggressive and will attack any intruder. Oh, he can speak English? Nice. I'm safe now. As I followed him through the forest, he stayed quiet, but I couldn't help brimming with questions. Where did you come from? Why are you here? You're not a local, right? Are you a scientist? Can you at least tell me your name? Silas. Okay, Silas. May I borrow your phone to call my sister? She'll pick me right up. Do you think I'd be here if I had a phone? I also got here by an accident a couple of years ago. Living like one of them is the only way to survive around here. At least until someone comes to save us. No, no, that can't be. It wasn't a deserted island, but I was certainly deserted on it. We arrived at a cave on the other side of the island where, according to Silas, the locals never roam around. You'll be safe here. I'll be right back. I didn't need him to take care of me. He may have stayed here for years, but I won't. I'll escape. It wouldn't be so hard to build a raft, right? So I gathered some logs. You hungry? 
Silas came back and threw something wrapped in leaves. Get these gross bugs away from me! I would rather starve! <laughs> these are a delicacy. You have no taste. Stay here. Don't do anything stupid. It's getting dark, so I had no choice but to go to sleep hungry in the stuffy, mucky cave. There's dirty moss and bugs everywhere. Ew! At the break of dawn, I couldn't stand it any longer. I got up to continue working on my raft. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Now goodbye, stupid island! But... No! My beautiful raft crumbled and sank as soon as it touched the water. Feeling defeated, I laid on the sand in frustration. Suddenly, I heard a whistle. Hmm? Silas? How am I supposed to get up there? Am I his pet or something? What gives? Making me walk all the way up here? Mind you, I haven't eaten in a day. Then, let's go get breakfast. But, get changed first. He then took me to a river and showed me how to catch fishes. What do you mean I'm supposed to get my breakfast with this stick? Watch and learn, princess. Then Silas jabbed the spear into the water again and again until it's full of fishes. Okay, wanna challenge me? Psst, that's easy. Only, it's not. It's like the fishes could read my mind. It's been like half an hour and still nothing. There's plenty of fish in the sea, but somehow you can't catch any. Don't expect anything from my batch. Whatever, I'm not hungry. I don't need him. My sister will surely come and get me out of here on our private chopper soon. But Silas was really rubbing it in, grilling fish in front of me until the delicious smell filled my nose. But no way I'd give in to this. This is your best bet. Unless you want to try grilled rat or cicada or... Fine, gimme. <laughs> when we first met, I thought you were cute. But after seeing this... Ugh, this smug Tarzan. Full now? <laughs> then it's time for Work? Work? So you're only keeping me around to be your slave? Do you want to keep living in that cave? You shouldn't steal the bugs home like that. We continued to walk deeper into the jungle until we reached this huge tree. We should build you a shelter up there. You'll be safe from the wildlife and the natives don't go to this area. Does it need to be up so high? If they are that dangerous, how come you survive here this long? Are you playing me? <sighs> I got really lucky. I was swept away by a storm while sailing alone. And when I washed up here, the natives were so ready to, you know, send me to God. But thankfully, the chief's daughter, Nora, desperately begged her father to let me live. And for some reason, he did. That wouldn't happen to just anyone. Oh, this Nora girl must have been caught in some love at first sight. That's why you stayed here all this time. So romantic. Stop wasting time. Let's get to work. Building a shelter proved to be more difficult than expected. And Silas proved to be quite bossy. Hand me the big branch. Bigger. Amy. Rattan rope. Give me another knife. Just wait a second. Let me catch my breath. You were so determined a few minutes ago. Go take a break. I want to finish this before sunset. I sat there, watching Silas work as the afternoon turned to dusk. And I must have dozed off for a while, as when I woke up, the treehouse was done. To be honest, it was better than what I expected from him. But where is he? I looked around, but the only thing I found was his scribbles on the ground. Stay here. I was glad to have my own shelter, but there was nothing to do to pass the time. Suddenly, there was a sound. Must be coming from the tribe. I followed the direction of the sound, hoping not to get lost. But soon enough, I found a clearing where a group of the natives were gathered around a huge bonfire. They were chanting something. Others were dancing, others cheered. It looked like they were having fun, which hit me with a wave of homesickness. For a moment, I was so lost in their celebration that I forgot I was being stealthy. Uh-oh, not again. I could have tried to run, but I froze. Thankfully, Silas stepped forward, telling the others to stay. As he approached, we made eye contact briefly before he signaled people that the coast was clear, then gave me a quick wink before returning to the fire. Shortly after I returned home, Silas did too. Are you trying to get yourself killed? I'm not kidding when I say it will be very bad if they find out about you. I'm sorry. I'm just scared and lonely. I'm all by myself and my family must be looking for me everywhere. To my surprise, Silas came over to comfort me. Everything's gonna be alright. I got you. Who? Where? How are you here? She clearly didn't know much English, but her weapon pointed at me was enough to know that she was angry. Silas immediately ran over to calm her down. I didn't know what they were saying, but she left, though not before giving me one last dirty look. Turned out it was Nora. Oh, what a relief! An acquaintance! Why didn't you tell me earlier? D 
Don't celebrate too soon. Nora insisted you leave immediately. Oh, she knows how? Then I don't have much of a choice whether I stay or leave here, do I? Don't worry. I'll take care of Nora. And he must have, because the days passed by and the natives never came to drive me out. Silas continued to visit me every day, bringing cloves, teaching me how to pick fruit, swing on branches. Soon the work turned to play. He started teaching me tribal dances and vocabulary, and we visited the waterfalls and lakes around the island. It's pretty fun. It felt like going on adventures with my dad again. Confident in my knowledge of the island, I started to venture out on my own. But Silas didn't prepare me for this. A leopard showed itself and slowly moved towards me. I tried to stay composed to find a way to escape, even though every bit of me was freaking out. When suddenly, Nora jumped down from nowhere and petted the leopard as if it was her little kitten. She gave it a fish and the kitty just happily ran away. Thank you so much. I'm Amy, Silas's friend. Silas, mine. Yes, he's all yours. I hate him so much. I wouldn't even touch a strand of his hair. Silas? Ew. No, no. Nora huffs loudly before leaving. Here. Or maybe I shouldn't share it with you since you hate me so much. Oh, stop it. My life was on the line. It was not time to confess my feelings. Oops. What did I just say? I continued to stutter, making lame excuses. You're not even listening to me, are you? You haven't heard a thing I've said. Huh? What did you say? He grinned and left without another word. I couldn't stop smiling at the silly bracelet. The island isn't really that bad. I have the freedom I've always wanted. I wake up with the sunrise and have things like this. This really is the life. One day, the sun had already set and Silas still hadn't come over. I was starting to worry when he arrived with... Nora? Silas said she wanted to bring me some clothes. I was relieved that she finally wanted to make peace, but her expression confused me. When I thanked her, she didn't say a thing or even smile. We sat around the fire. Silas and I talked about one thing after another. Oops, we might have forgotten about Nora, but the language barrier really is a big deal, you know. And so she just sat there sulking. Suddenly, she stood up, causing hot coal to splatter all over me. Silas hastily helped me clean my hands as Nora stormed off. Is she okay? Maybe you should go follow her. But Silas reassured me she'd be fine and went to find aloe vera sap for my burns. I think she misinterprets our relationship. Does she? Because I too thought there was something going on. I was too surprised, but managed to gather myself enough to reply clumsily. Says who? I don't think you've formally courted me, sir. Tomorrow will be our first date, then. In the mushroom forest. What do you say? I was glad Silas had saved this place for a date, because everything about it was curious and beautiful. Before long, I had wandered far ahead of Silas. I knew I had gone too far, but something drew me deeper into the forest. I walked along this cave, as I thought I saw a ray of light at the end. And there really was! The cave was not a dead end, but it was just covered by vines! And, oh my god, this is like a whole other paradise that hasn't been discovered! And there was wreckage of an old helicopter! I immediately called Silas over, and he seemed to not have any idea about this either. We explored the helicopter the whole morning, but it was nothing except a rusted hunk of junk. We were about to leave when Silas hit a button, and the radio came to life. We had found our new hobby! Since then, we went there every day, listening to music and pre-recorded content on the stereo. But eventually, we somehow got a faint radio signal, and for the first time, we had some connection to the outside world. I normally didn't care so much for news, but my interest was piqued by a familiar-sounding story. Right after the death of the biggest name in the gem industry, his wife was kicked out of the house. Any relations to the missing of the youngest daughter? Who will be the winner of the fight for his inheritance? Was this real? Were they talking about my family on the radio? Why would my mother leave? I then recalled my mother's strange behavior before I left. She, for the first time, encouraged me to go on an adventure. And I somehow ended up here. Was it even a coincidence? Oh no, how could a mother do this to her own daughter? Calm down. I believe there's more to this. Don't jump to conclusion yet. Personally, I don't think tigers eat their young. Maybe, maybe not. There's only one way to find out. I need to go home. Immediately. So, my dream of conquering Hollywood and becoming a world-renowned actress is finally beginning. Today is my first casting. Oh boy, I hope it runs smoothly. Now I just have to change my clothes. I heard that Jenny Sinclair is here too. She's bound to get the main role, as her billionaire dad is too influential for her to not to. 
Ugh, you mean Jenny? The talentless eye candy? She's nothing special. Her dad's loaded, and it's rumored her mom is a famous actress. But after giving birth to her, she abandoned her for a movie role. This is so unfair. How are we meant to compete with some rich girl with a paternal sob story? <sighs> yes, I'm Jenny Sinclair, the daughter of billionaire Rod Sinclair and the rumored daughter of a mysterious famous actress. People think growing up in wealth means my life is super easy. Wrong! My dad refuses to talk to me about my mother. Hence, even I myself don't know who she is. And dad is also completely against my acting dreams. You see... I definitely needed to win this role on talent. Then they'd all take me seriously. It's almost my turn. I'm so nervous. The movie's called The Servant, so the main role is for the part of this maid. And Mrs. Sharma, a veteran actress who had just come back from Hollywood, will play the role of the ruthless mistress. Ah, this is it. Fingers crossed I don't forget my lines. Next, Jennifer Sinclair. Ignoring the buzzing gossip behind me, I confidently stepped onto the stage and smiled at Mrs. Sharma. She seemed a little surprised when she saw me. Fetch me a cup of chamomile tea. I was walking with the tray when, oops, I tripped and fell, and the cup shattered across the floor. You incompetent girl, you do realize that cup was worth more than you are? Huh? This wasn't in the script. Stunned, I just stood there with a confused look on my face. Poof! Miss Sinclair, how are you supposed to be an actress when your reactions are this abysmal? Acting is also about improvisation, not just learning the script by heart, young lady. Jenny, you clearly didn't do your research, as you're clueless about this character. I regained my composure, hurriedly apologized to Miss Sharma, and begged the director to let me try one more time. I don't have time for this. How can a young girl who was born with a silver spoon in her mouth ever understand the life of a maid? Please leave. Other contestants are waiting. So, my dream casting became a nightmare. Ugh, it felt like the whole world was laughing at me. Miss, please get up. You need to eat something. Please don't be down. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. No, that was my big chance, and I blew it. Lucas Hemingworth hates me. That basically means the whole industry will now shun me. Oh, him. My aunt's his housekeeper, and she said he's a horror to work for. He's fired five housekeepers within the last month, and now nobody dares apply. Don't let him get you down. Everybody knows how obnoxious he is. Did you just say Lucas Hemingworth is looking for a maid, and you know the housekeeper there? Um, that's right, but this is the perfect way to show him that I'm not just a pretty face. I might seem like a spoiled rich girl. I sure still can play the role of a maid better than anyone else. Please help me, or else I'll go on a hunger strike. I, I... Before she had a chance to reply, I grabbed the glass of milk and glugged it all in one breath. Okay then, we have the deal now? Hey, it's me, Jenny. I pass for a maid now, right? Remember what I told you, and never set foot in the master's working room without being asked. Now go to the warehouse and get me the box of Christmas decorations. Ugh, this box was so heavy. Suddenly I bumped into something, and as I fell, all of the Christmas decorations scattered across the floor. Huh? What was beneath me? Oh no, I was lying on top of someone. Oh my god, it was Lucas. I quickly got off him and apologized, but he just tutted at me, then walked off. I was feeling dumbfounded as I picked up the decorations when this girl approached me. You're the new maid, huh? Don't think that being pretty means you can seduce my dad to become a famous actress or something. Here's a piece of advice. Don't even dream about it. From now on, this maid serves me and only me. What a bummer. It was only my first day and I'd already got on the wrong side of Lily, the director's daughter. She already had a reputation in the modeling world for her extremely unpleasant personality. And indeed, from that day on, whenever she was home, she spent every second of her time tormenting me. Once, Lily asked me to bring her a cup of hot tea, but as soon as I put the tea tray down, 
she immediately changed her mind. She wanted her tea to be cool instead, so I had to stand fanning the cup for half an hour. Then on another occasion, she ordered me to stand by the pool in the midday heat holding a tray of fruit. Then after each lap, she made me feed her a piece. It's not surprising I ended up with heat stroke and fell into the pool, which must have been extremely funny to Lily. Ugh. Well, she who laughs today may weep tomorrow. The next day, while watering the roses in the backyard, I caught sight of Lily acting out the part of the maid in front of her father through the living room's window. It seemed that she wanted to take the lead role in the movie, too. I think you should just focus on your commercial advertising projects. You haven't learned the lines, and your fake crying is terrible. Do you even know which book this movie is adapted from? Then he just left, leaving her with her tantrum. At that moment, Lily caught me standing there laughing. So, as punishment, she ordered me to clean every single book in the library. Ugh! Whatever. I liked books anyway. Standing on the ladder cleaning, I happened to see the original copy of The Servant, the book the play is based on. I took it off the shelf, when suddenly, the sound of the door opening startled me. I quickly put the book back and tried to climb down the ladder, but then I misplaced my footing and... Ah! Firm hands grabbed my waist and guided me onto my feet. They were wearing a hoodie, mask, and sunglasses. OMG! Had a thief just saved me? Who are you? How did you get in? This is trespassing. Do you realize whose house you're trying to rob? And you, do you know who you're talking to? Thief. Ridiculous. Then he pulled down his hood and took off his sunglasses and mask. Oh god. It was Jack Jerome, the hottest actor on the scene right now. Before I could react, Lily's high-pitched scream startled us both. Jack, you're here! It's so exciting that you're staying with us for the next few months. I'm such a huge fan. To Lily's dismay, Jack ignored her, then coldly walked out of the room. So, turns out Jack's been cast as the male lead in The Servant, and to avoid adding to his already scandalous past and thus affecting the movie, Lucas insisted he stay here during filming. Anyway, even though I didn't like Jack at all... At least him being around meant Lily was too busy clinging on to him to pester me. These days, I often take advantage of the late-night cleaning time to study the original book. The last audition is coming up, and I have to understand my character better than anyone else. I was cleaning the kitchen while reading, when suddenly I heard footsteps. Hmm, who could it be at this time? So, you like this book? It's confusing though, right? Are you suggesting a mere maid like me isn't smart enough to understand it? I have no idea why you're cast as the warm, kind-natured, sincere part of Alfred. You're clearly the opposite of him. It's called acting, sweetheart. So are you saying an actor must be exactly like their character in real life? Then shouldn't you be more cautious, since I just played a murdering lunatic in my last movie? He's really unpleasant. Arguing with someone as arrogant as him was pointless. I'd just taken a few steps when I slipped over, but Jack reached out and grabbed my shirt tail, which helped save me from falling flat on the ground, but caused my shirt to tear. I blushed in embarrassment and tried to fix it. Here, have this, he said, as he quickly took off his jacket and placed it around my shoulders. At that moment, out of nowhere, Lily appeared. On seeing her, Jack hurriedly left the kitchen. She stormed over to me and yanked his shirt off me. What now? Changing your target already? But let me remind you, you're just some dumb maid. Jack's mine? Oh, poor Lily. You delusional girl. I'm not interested in Jack. But it doesn't take more than a glance to tell he's not remotely interested in her. Because of yesterday's incident... Lily made me wake up at 4 a.m. to bake probably all kinds of cakes that exist on Earth. I'd just finished decorating the last batch when she rushed into the kitchen, snatched the apron and gloves off me, then put them on. I didn't have time to understand what was happening when Jack walked in and she quickly held the plate out to him. Have a bite! I got up early to make it for you. What a fake! Jack was about to pop a piece of cake into his mouth, when I realized it was almond. He's allergic to them. 
Stop! That cake has almonds in it. Here, have this one. He took the cake, then winked at me before he walked off. Yeah, his personality sucks, but... Oh boy, how to resist that strong jawline and those beautiful deep eyes? Mmm. Naturally, Lily was furious, so she forced me to make tea. But no matter how much she knocked on Jack's door, he wouldn't open it for her. So she angrily threw the tea tray on the ground and yelled for me to clean it up. Oh my, it was such a mess. The carpet was tea-stained and there were bits of chipped china everywhere. I started picking up the pieces when, ouch, I cut my hand. Jack immediately opened the door. Then on seeing my bleeding hand, he quickly led me into his room and helped me bandage the cut. I didn't know he had this warm side to him. How surprising. This weekend, the director's having a small gathering for the film cast and crew, so my time was taken up with the preparation for this. Now I was confident to say that I had fully understood what it's like to be a servant, there's no housework that I hadn't tried. I also accidentally lied to the housekeeper that I used to be a bartender, so she assigned the cocktail making to me. I was trying to get my head around the recipe of a cosmopolitan when Jack walked in. Pretty good, but perhaps it needs a little more cranberry juice. You want the merry, not passing out. <laughs> I know all the guests coming, so I can give you hints on what cocktails to serve them. That's a good thing. I could ask him more about my future co-stars. The two of us talked passionately about wine, cocktails, and the servant book. Hmm, turns out he's actually quite sweet, and nothing at all like those ego-driven swine the press portray him as. While talking and drinking, I felt a little dizzy. Suddenly, Jack approached me. Actually, I find you quite captivating, so you can quit playing around now. Playing around? Huh? You think I like you? You're drunk. I was about to leave when Jack stopped me. You're always falling over in front of me. You remember my almond allergy. You're reading the book I'm cast as the lead in. If you don't like me, how come you've been with me this whole time? I looked at Jack confused. Honestly, every time I faced him, I felt my heart skip. Seeing me blushing, Jack gently lifted my chin and placed a sweet kiss on my lips. Right then, a scream made me jump and almost fell over again. Ah! What on earth are you two doing? I frantically ran out of the kitchen, leaving Lily screaming behind me. I sat outside by the pool until I regained my composure. That was unexpected. My first kiss was with Jack, the scandalous actor I hated the most. Hmm... I think I needed to leave before things became even more complicated. After composing myself, I went back to my room to start packing, and saw my clothes were thrown across the ground and there, sitting on my bed with a smug look on her face, was Lily. She waved my passport and script in her hand. Jenny Sinclair, it appears I know your secret. How humble of you to lower yourself to play a maid just to get a movie role. Imagine the scandal if the press found out about this. No one would dare to cooperate with a snake like you. I angrily grabbed my things back, but it didn't work. Lily even pulled out her phone to film and threaten me. Do what I say, else this video goes viral. Then not only will your daddy dearest know you've been scrubbing toilets all day, but imagine the damage your lies will do to his precious reputation. Gah! She was messing with the wrong girl. My method acting experience was over. I was done being her puppet. It's time she realized who's the true master of this game. It's not here. Not there either. Where can it be? It's not just any shirt. It's my most prized possession. It has Kendall Jenner, my idol's autograph on it. Franny, your t-shirt was dirty, so I cleaned it for you. Come have a look. Oh, snap. I rushed over to see my precious shirt neatly piled on top of the fresh laundry. No, 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 no. The autograph's completely gone. Grandma! That's right. The person responsible for this unwanted blank shirt is my grandma, who just moved in with us after Granddad passed away. At first, it seemed exciting because my memories about Grandma were all from my happy childhood with her. But now I'm taking it back. She's a literal disaster. You know what? 
she is getting on in years, but still wants to learn to use social media. My mom even bought her a brand new iPhone 14. Meanwhile, her dear daughter was stuck with this lame iPhone 8. <sighs> Honestly, all she needed was just one of those brick phones that can only take calls. With her forgetfulness, she'll forget all her passwords. So it's best to just log in with my iCloud. After all, this phone will become mine anyway. Oh, that's quite a handsome young man. You think so too? Indeed, Josh's attractiveness is second to none. He's every girl's dream man. And yours as well, right? As if I stood a chance. He's notoriously cold, and none of the girls from school seem to interest him. Well, that probably was the only time we shared the same thought. Otherwise, we're always arguing about all kinds of things, especially the way I dress. She didn't even bother asking me before sewing up all my favorite ripped jeans and then left a dress that she'd made on my bed with a note. This adorable dress will suit you much better. I used to love her handmade dresses when I was five, but who even wears anything like this these days? That's not all. She nagged me all the time for straightening my hair instead of keeping it naturally frizzy, since it's supposedly cuter. And guess what? It's actually her who I'd inherited my natural hair from. Bet she didn't know it was the reason I had to grow up with my classmates saying stuff like, you're actually quite pretty, but it's a shame about the hair. And how come you don't have straight hair like your parents? Are you adopted? Those hurtful words made me hate my hair with a passion and wish for beautiful, smooth, straight hair, like Kendall Jenner's. So of course, I'll keep straightening it every day, no matter what grandma says. Thankfully, those complaints will finally come to an end tomorrow, as I'm going back to school after summer break. Yay! Huh? What's everyone buzzing about? At that moment, the teacher walked in and announced that our class will have a very special new student. And then, a very familiar figure entered my class. It was... My grandma? What on earth? Did she get lost on her way to bingo or what? How humiliating. Maybe if I stayed deadly still, she wouldn't spot me and no one would know it was my granny. Oh, my sweetie pie, you forgot your orange juice. All eyes were on me. Good grief. Someone help me disappear from this planet, please. After class, I had to sneak out as fast as I could to avoid having lunch with my grandma but my best friend Lloyd wouldn't quit teasing me. Suddenly, I heard someone laughing loudly across the room. Grandma? But who is she sitting with? Wow, Joe has quite a peculiar taste in women. He ignores every single girl in this school, but is now completely smitten over your granny. Jeez, why is she bothering him? Joe must have felt uncomfortable. I quickly went over there, apologized, and pulled my grandma away. On the way home from school, my grandma recounted her day just like a little kid would. Do you know that they have vending machines in the hallway with all kinds of snacks? That's genius! And oh my, the campus is big. I almost wet myself while searching for the restroom. <laughs> Tell me which part of this is funny again? It only proves that someone her age belongs in a nursing home, not a high school. I needed to talk to mom. So when she was finally alone in the kitchen, I immediately asked her, how exactly did Grandma end up in my class? It turned out that when my parents invited Grandma to live with us, she told them she would, but only if she could go to school. I think it's a lovely idea. It means she won't be lonely at home all day, as you'll keep her company. Besides, she spent her whole life taking care of our family, so it's our turn to look after her, right? Yeah, I suppose Mom raised some valid points. But who knew that Grandma could turn my school life upside down like this? She clung to me all day, ate whatever I ate, listened to the music I listened to, and even hung out with my friends. Worse still, she told them all embarrassing childhood stories about me, how I used to eat toothpaste because the ad said it was edible, and how I incubated eggs myself to see if I could hatch a chick. But that's not the worst part. She broke my hair straightener, so now I'm stuck wearing this stupid hat. How annoying. Hey, hey, breaking news. What is it this time? Jose has found the girl of his dreams, and she's here at our school. No way. No girls have caught his eye before. Why now? Ah, uh, Franny, what on earth? I look down and, oops, I just accidentally turned him into Sully from Monsters, Inc. Sorry, my bad. Okay, let me see. As Lloyd told me, this was the girl Jose got to know through Tinder before she mysteriously vanished. Moore, 17 years old, goes to my school and, wait. She only has this picture? All I could see was her frizzy brown hair. Out of nowhere, someone snatched my hat. That must be Lloyd trying to get back at me for the paint job earlier. I tried to grumble at him, 
but only saw Grandma with my hat in her hand. Franny, your hair is so beautiful. Why cover it up? And also, these clothes. The dress I made for you goes far better with your hair. Enough. There's no way I'd let anyone see me with this hideous hair and granny outfit. Please, Grandma. Leave me alone and don't cause me any more trouble. This is my school and having you around is embarrassing. She looked shocked and was about to say something, but just left without another word. So, it's been a week since we last talked. It seemed that I was no longer her concern as she made new friends. So it's good for both of us, right? Suddenly, I heard a deep voice behind me. Hi, Franny. Can I talk to you about something? Wait, this voice? I immediately turned around to see Joe standing there, smiling at me. Oh my, this is the first time Joe's ever asked to speak to a girl. All the envious eyes are on me. I'm the luckiest girl here. Has he finally seen my unique charm? The thing is, I happened to see your curly hair the other day, and you look quite like the girl in the picture. I wonder if you are... Oh, he didn't come here because of me. Um, sorry, but I'm not Moore. I could see the disappointment on his face. He apologized for getting the wrong person, but before leaving, he smiled and told me, By the way, you're pretty with that curly hair. Really? That frizzy hair that I've gone out of my way to hide? Can't believe someone out there, besides Granny, actually likes it. A few days later, I arrived at school to a frightening scene. Jose was hand in hand with Amy. Turns out, she had come forwards as the mysterious girl. Let's see, 17? Check. Curly brown hair? Check. And her last name is Moore. There's no mistaking it. But I kept wondering, what is Jose like about this notorious wild girl? Her clique, which now included my dear granny, are always playing dumb tricks for attention. Look, she's no different from a traffic light now that she's friends with them. Once, their group even turned the library into a runway. Obviously, this quickly reached the supervisor, but, well, only my grandma was slow enough to get caught. Thanks to that, she received a ticket to the principal's office and they called in... My mom! Don't you find it ridiculous that a person this age is still getting scolded by the principal? School is not the place for grandma at all. Performing art requires a bold personality, girl. I might be old, but my spirit remains youthful. You know what? I'm going to participate in the Rise to Fame contest as well. I think I may just win. I turned to my mother with begging eyes, but only received a forced smile and a, just let her do what she wants. You'll lose anyway. Why bother? How about you sign up too, and we'll see who wins? Ha! Huh. Fine. Challenge accepted. I'll defeat you easily, Granny. Just wait and see. Finally, Rise to Fame, my school's annual competition, arrived. Each team of three will participate in different rounds, with the two best teams going to the final. First round, handball was a piece of cake for us. Having two sporty types on the team helped with that. As for Granny's team, which consisted of herself, Jose, and Dolly Amy, they were eliminated almost immediately. <laughs> After sports was a Sudoku round. Each team will compete against one another. Whoever solves the puzzle first wins, which should be a breeze because I used to spend rain-filled afternoons playing this game with Granny as a kid. On the other hand, Amy was complaining to the organizing committee that this round was a joke, since Sudoku was so outdated. The more she talked, the more it showed that she's terrible at math and numbers. So it'll be like taking candy from a baby, right? But I forgot Granny was on their team, and unexpectedly, Jose was also very quick-witted. It didn't take them long to solve such a difficult puzzle. Seeing them hugging and celebrating pissed me off. Losing to them by a mere second was the real stinger. Focus, Franny! We had to beat them in the countries and histories round to win. Just a few more minutes till the final round. I was about to leave the waiting room when suddenly I heard a ding coming from this phone left on the chair. It's grandma's phone. But wait, she knows how to use Tinder? Curious, I opened it and on the screen were all the messages from Jose and the mysterious Moore. Why does grandma have this account? And why is Jose convinced Amy isn't who he's looking for? I immediately went to look for my grandma and found her in the corner of the stage wing. But as I approached her, she pulled my hand in and signaled for me to keep silent. <laughs> I thought you let that annoying old hag join the team as a joke. Who knew she'd be so helpful? You'll win easily. Yeah, right? I even heard that history is her strength. I just need her to finish this last round, then I'll kick her out in a heartbeat. 
The whole group burst out laughing. I nervously turned to look at Granny, but she didn't show any sign of anger. So what will my grandma do next, you ask? As soon as the final round began, she stood up, took the mic, and announced, I want to withdraw from the competition because I will never let two-faced people get the better of me. After that, she left, and the whole audience started to make a fuss, while Amy's face turned pale. However, the real shocker was when Jose also came on stage. Me too. I don't want to be in a team with a liar. Then he walked away as Amy chased after him. The audience buzzed, and the organizers announced that this meant our team had automatically won the competition. I rushed home right after the award ceremony to find Grandma ruminating in the garden. I quietly sat down next to her and put my hand on her shoulder to console her. She looked at me, gently smiled, and started telling me stories I'd never heard before. I discovered that she fell pregnant at 16 and dropped out of school. Her friends weren't very nice to her, so she'd never resumed her education. So now she had time, she decided to go back to school to experience her lost youth. That's why, Franny, you should never let others' mean words get to you. Cherish what you have, because there are still people who love that side of you. What she said was really touching, and it reminded me of Joseph's compliments on my hair. Granny, so what about the Tinder account? Oh, I know you really like Jose, so I created an account to learn more about him so I could help you. Turns out, that profile picture was Grandma when she was younger, hence the similarity to me. And Moore actually was her maiden name. I hugged her and profusely apologized for my poor behavior. She gently patted my head, smiled, and said she'd take me to a secret spot. The next day, I returned to my naturally frizzy hair and put on the dress Granny gave me. It wasn't trendy, but it fit me perfectly. And weirdly, I felt kind of confident wearing it. My grandma and I happily walked into a book cafe when I spotted Joe's. I've brought the person you're looking for here. We both looked at her with questioning eyes. You mean, turned out there was still one thing she hadn't told me, that the alias Moore she put up on Tinder was all based on my preferences, my hobbies, my habits, my taste in music, etc. She'd been collecting everything about me to text Jose. <laughs> I had to let him know there's an interesting girl like our Franny out there, right? That was why Jose didn't feel as compatible with Amy. Then the intelligence round confirmed it, as he and the mysterious girl both had one thing in common, a passion for Sudoku. In the end, everything was cleared up. Grandma is still attending my school, and I actually don't mind it anymore. She brings in homemade cakes for me and my friends, tells us interesting stories about the old days, and gives out the best advice. Most importantly, she made me realize that being me isn't so bad, frizzy hair and all. Almost forgot, you're also wondering what happened between me and Jose, huh? Well, I think you should see for yourself. Why wasn't it working? I followed all the steps, but still, nothing! At that moment, my best friend Harry walked towards me and asked with a confused look, Hey, what you doing? <sighs> hey, Harry, I'm just working on this plan to become popular, but it isn't going so well. I changed my style and posted more on social media, but I'm still not cool! You're probably wondering why I was desperately wanting to be popular, right? Well, it's all because of my annoying hiccups. Last year, I was on stage performing the play Our Town when I suddenly started to hiccup. Constantly. I couldn't stop, and the whole audience started to laugh at me. In the end, they had to replace me with my understudy. Not only was it the most humiliating moment of my life, but I've also been teased about it ever since. This year, I wanted to become popular. Then everyone would forget about the hiccuping incident. <sighs> if only becoming popular was easy. Hey, you could help me. No way! Your plan is crazy! At that moment, the new student, Amanda, passed by, surrounded by a bunch of other students. Why is this girl so popular? I mean, she's only been here a week. You don't know? She's Dustin's sister. He's already the most popular guy in school. So being his sister makes her popular too. Duh. That's it, Harry. The fastest way for me to climb the popularity ladder is to date Dustin. At first, Harry seemed confused by this, but then he suddenly agreed to help me. With one condition, of course, that after I succeeded in becoming Dustin's girlfriend, I had to introduce Amanda to him. 
I knew it. He had a crush on her. Every guy in the school does. Fine. I'll help him, as I need Harry in this anyway. He plays a crucial role in my plan, and you'll soon figure out why. After school, I was waiting in a corner at the parking lot when Harry walked towards me, followed by Dustin. I heard you're giving tutor lessons. Yeah, that's right. I don't take money. I just need... What do you need? I need you to pretend to be my boyfriend. Dustin burst out laughing. But then when he saw our serious looks, he stopped. Um, you two are crazy. But I do need to pass math, so... Okay. However, my grades have to improve within two weeks. Then we have a deal. Deal? I grinned. Within two weeks? That's so easy. What a catch. You must be wondering how we managed to pull that off. Well, Harry's on Dustin's soccer team and overheard the coach tell him if he didn't improve his math grade, he'd be kicked off the team. Basically, we used Dustin's weakness to get the deal. <laughs> I know I had no chance with him by using my lousy flirting skills. So it's time to use my greatest strength, my brain. Pretty smart, huh? I started to tutor Dustin. Then after two weeks, he shot up two grades. And that's when he held up his end of the deal and pretended to be my boyfriend. The next day, Dustin and I held hands and walked into school. And just as I expected, everybody was gawping at us. I even heard them whisper about me, is that the hiccup girl with Dustin? And, whoa, since when were those two a thing? Ha, <laughs> and that's not all. Wherever I went, people would follow me. And in every class, everyone wanted to sit next to me. Finally, I was popular, and I loved it. I just finished tutoring Dustin at his house and was about to head home when his mom appeared and invited me to stay for dinner. Awkward, but I didn't want to be rude, so I said yes. Besides, this was a great opportunity to talk to Amanda. I was sitting next to Dustin at the dinner table when Amanda walked in and gave me a dirty look. What is she doing here? Amanda, manners! Um... Okay, had I upset her somehow? After we finished eating, I helped Amanda clean up. I pulled some homemade chocolate cookies out of my bag and gave my friendly a smile as I said, Um, my friend Harry, he likes you. I was wondering if... Without letting me finish my sentence, Amanda interrupted me. Sorry, let me stop you right there. First, I don't eat cookies. Gross. Second, I assume you're asking me if I want to go out with your friend, right? Um, no, because he's a loser just like you. It's embarrassing enough that Dustin is dating you. Then she walked off, leaving me standing there dumbfounded. Oh my god, couldn't believe what I just heard. How could a person be so rude? Ugh. The next day at school, I wanted to tell Harry to give up on Amanda, but as soon as I caught sight of him, he ran towards me, hugged me and said, Emily, you're a matchmaking genius. Thank you. Huh? What do you mean by that? Amanda just asked me if I wanted to come to her party this weekend. Isn't that great? Yay! What on earth was going on? But Harry looked so happy that I just couldn't tell him the truth. One thing's for sure, there's something sus about Amanda. Of course, I was going to that party too, because I was Dustin's girlfriend, remember? Wow, we were actually at a cool kid's party. Her first time ever. This was awesome. Harry even got a bit emotional. <laughs> what a baby. Dustin and I teamed up to play beer pong, and it was so much fun, and unexpectedly, we won! We were so excited, and both of us cheered with joy and hugged each other without thinking. Oops, didn't see that coming. But what happened next was even crazier. Everybody started to cheer, kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh boy, they couldn't be serious, right? I just laughed it off and hoped everyone would stop. But no, they just kept cheering on. Suddenly, Dustin grabbed my face and kissed me right on the lips. I didn't push him away. Oh no, instead, I closed my eyes and got carried away. I even lifted up one leg. Oh, and FYI, that was my first kiss. After that, we both turned bright red and avoided eye contact. Ugh, my whole body felt hot like I was having a fever or something. <laughs> Anyway, the party was everything I dreamed of and more. The next day, Harry and I arrived at school in a super good mood. But suddenly, 
we saw a bunch of students gathering around someone. We squished through the crowd and saw Amanda crying. Turns out, somebody from the party had stolen two of her mom's Fabergé eggs. Then, one of Amanda's friends suggested checking all backpacks and lockers of everyone who went to the party last night. But the chances are low. The culprit must have been able to hide all the evidence by now. Still, we should try everything we can, right? I couldn't bear seeing Amanda crying her eyes out like this. Then he gently patted her shoulder. Hey, that was smooth. Way to go, Harry. And so, we checked a few people's belongings, and still, nothing was found. Then it was Harry's turn. He opened the locker, and... Oh. My. God. One of the Fabergé eggs was in there! But how? He would never do such a thing. I opened my locker, and... What?! There was the other one! What on earth was going on? Suddenly, Amanda started shouting at us. I knew it was you two! Hey everybody, Emily over here manipulated Dustin by using his weaknesses, his love of soccer, and his dislike for math. Then she forced him to pretend to be her boyfriend just so she could be cool. Everybody started glaring at me like I was the villain, but I wasn't. There was a misunderstanding. I looked over to Dustin for help but he just avoided my gaze, then walked off. I didn't know what to do, so I just stood there in shock until Harry dragged me off with him. Well, after that, I was more popular than ever. I was now known as the girl who took advantage of a guy to get popular and then stole from him. Worse, Amanda wouldn't listen to me. Harry and I were clearly framed. <sighs> I wish I could go back to my normal life before I made that stupid deal with Dustin. Oh, but then that kiss wouldn't have happened. Oh boy, might I have fallen for Dustin? Then suddenly I got a text from Amanda. It was a clip from the recent party with the message, You're nothing to Dustin. Why are you dating this loser? Wasn't she the girl who hiccuped during the play? <laughs> I will use her until the end of this semester. Oh my, I couldn't believe he said that. I knew he didn't like me in the way I liked him. But did he have to be so mean? The clip automatically replayed again. Ugh. Watching this one time was bad enough. But wait, there was a detail in the clip that caught my attention. I rewound it and, oh my god, there were the two missing Fabergé eggs. The clip was recorded at midnight, but Harry and I left the party way before then. I quickly rushed over to Dustin and Amanda's house and showed them the video. I don't remember you both leaving earlier. What if you're lying? Well, I noticed your front door has cameras. If you want, we could check them. Dustin turned to Amanda and confusingly asked, Did you put those eggs in Emily and Harry's lockers? Amanda said nothing, but her head down said it all. But why would you do that? Emily didn't do anything wrong. Because I don't like her being your girlfriend. I... I like you! Um, what? Isn't she his sister? Oh, turns out they aren't actually siblings. Phew. That would have been weird. The truth is their parents were really close. And when Amanda's parents died in an accident, Dustin's family took her in. So Amanda was like a sister to Dustin. But Amanda, on the other hand, has been in love with him for a long time. I decided not to make a big deal out of it. As long as she posted a status on social media saying this was all a misunderstanding and that we didn't steal from her, and she reluctantly agreed. Afterward, I immediately got out of there without saying anything else to Dustin, but he ran after me and apologized for not defending me the other day. He just couldn't choose between me and Amanda. And then he said, That clip you saw wasn't what you think. Ugh. What's there not to understand? It was so obvious. Then what is it? Please tell me. But Dustin just stood there silent and stared down at his sneakers. Just like I thought. There's nothing else to explain, so I stormed off. The next day, Amanda posted the status, and our names were finally cleared. My life is back to being boring, but it's okay, as I now know that being popular isn't what brings me happiness. Oh, and about me and Dustin? Well, a few days later, he sent me a video. It was the same clip from the party. At first, this frustrated me. I mean, why would he make me endure watching that again? But then I noticed that this clip was longer, so out of curiosity, I pressed play. And you won't believe what happened in the second half of that video. After the part where Dustin said he just wanted to use me, everybody teased him more. He got angry and yelled. Yes, Emily is weird, but weird in a good way. I like the way she smells books every time she opens one, and the cute way she gets embarrassed when she sneezes loudly. And do you know what I like most about her? 
that she hiccups every time she's nervous. You heard me right. I like her. You see? Dustin likes me too. Amanda cut this part of the video out on purpose so I'd misjudge him. But now that I knew the truth, what do you think I did? Yeah, of course I forgave him. I mean, how couldn't I? <laughs> hmm. I wonder what's taking Valerie so long. She's been in that changing room for ages. Valerie? Is everything okay in there? Don't force it if it doesn't fit. No, this is the last dress in store. I just need to breathe in for a bit longer. So? It's beautiful, isn't it? Valerie spun around. Then suddenly... Yep. Trying to squeeze into a dress two sizes too small for her, then it split. <sighs> the giggles around us started. Valerie blushed hurriedly paid for the dress and pulled me out of the shop. Why am I so fat? Ugh! I just want to feel pretty on my date. If I was skinny like you, I wouldn't have this problem. Poof! You know, it's not as easy as you think being thin. Yep, you heard me right. Being thin has its downsides. First of all, fashion. My nightmare! I have to wear an extra small size, and the clothes still hang off me. Actually, most of my clothes are from kids' stores, so I feel so untrendy. Then in winter, I have to wear tons of layers just so I don't freeze to death. And in the summer, <sighs> I can't wear cute clothes as I look like a coat hanger. Not only that, because I'm so skinny, people often ask me to do nonsense stuff. Once, I was studying in my room when suddenly I heard my sister Camilla calling me. She'd forgotten her keys and forced me to climb through her tiny window gap to get them. Seriously, I can't even. Then, on another occasion, Valerie made me crawl into the classroom locker to help her cheat on her Spanish test. Unfortunately, the teacher walked in while this was happening and gave me a week's worth of detentions, of course. Ugh! Oh my god, No Way Home is so good. I literally can't think of one bad thing to say about it. Yep, the part near the end? Ah! Yep, guess what? I'd managed to trap my foot in a manhole. Man, what rotten luck. I tried pulling my leg free, but it was no use. It wouldn't budge. There I was, freaking out that I'd be stuck here forever, and all my friends could do was huddle together and ask me questions like, Madeline, how on earth did you get your foot in such a small slot? Wow, that's unbelievable. Even Jaden, my bookworm friend, took out a ruler from his backpack and started measuring how wide the slot was. Grr. My dear friends, I'm being stuck down here. Stop gopping and help me! Finally, they tried helping me out, but in the end, we had to call the rescue squad. By this point, a massive crowd had gathered around me, and strangers were filming me. When I was finally free, everyone looked at me and held back their laughter. Even Parker, my crush, was smiling. Jeez, this was beyond embarrassing. But... A hot guy like Parker would never notice a moving skeleton like me anyway. <sighs> Don't think like that, Maddie. You're so pretty. Show me some confidence, would you? Valerie said as she nudged my arm. I put the book down and glared at her, and suddenly noticed Parker walking towards our table, smiling. And, yep, he said he wanted to sit with us. Even though I was cheering inside of my head, I still had to act composed. And oh my god, can you believe he even said I was cute? After that day, Valerie kept on encouraging me, saying he had definitely given me a green light. So finally, I gathered my courage to write down all my feelings for Parker on a note and clipped it to his notebook. At the end of class that day, he came to my desk and took my hand. Yay! Everything was fine. Great even. Until one day, when the two of us were taking a romantic walk past the Swan Lake, 
Parker suddenly turned to me and said, You're so beautiful, Maddie. And if you just put on a few more pounds, I swear you'll be the hottest girl at school. Yes, I know. But it's hard for me to gain weight. No big deal. Just leave it to me. I'll fatten you up. I thought Parker was just joking, but it turns out he was being deadly serious. Since that day, every time we went on a date, instead of taking me to the bowling alley and movies as usual, Parker would take me out to eat. I swear, I've tried all the restaurants in our town. More surprisingly, on my birthday, Parker even gave me a bouquet of fried chicken. How romantic! But this didn't change anything, as my weight still stayed the same. Parker was disappointed when he peered over me and saw the scales hadn't budged. Then he sighed out. How come you and Valerie are friends, but look totally opposite? Here comes our adorable chubby Valerie. What? Parker called Valerie adorable again. This wasn't the first time either. Annoyed, I put down my fork and walked away from them. After that, I started avoiding Valerie. I did homework with other friends, sat with other girls at lunch, and every time I happened to see Valerie, I turned around and walked away. Honestly, I didn't want it to be this way, but just seeing her made me uncomfortable. But I couldn't bear to see my boyfriend call my BFF cute. Well, he thought I was too skinny. <sighs> then summer break finally rolled around. I thought it'd be just me and Parker, but then he went off to a summer camp in Spain. <sighs> the plan was all ruined. So, I spent a whole sunny day inside sulking. What's wrong? Are you bored because your lover is away? So why don't you take this time to surprise him when he returns? Surprise? A great idea popped into my head. But, but how do I get chubby? Easy peasy. Okay, if it's that easy, then show me. Okay, if you do my summer homework for me. What? She's such an opportunist. But I really wanted to pile on the pounds and please Parker. So, without hesitation, I nodded in agreement. So, from that day on, I started following Camilla's weight gain plan. I switched veggies for greasy foods, and my main meal was always late at night. I also changed water for milkshakes, but I did have to stop drinking them when the smell of milk alone made me feel sick. Seeing me eating crazy like that, my parents worriedly said, Madeline, eating healthily is important, else your health will be affected. But I ignored their advice. This time, I definitely had to gain weight. Finally, after a month of trying, I gained some weight. Yay! I looked a lot more attractive now, didn't I? I was studying myself in the mirror when I heard my phone beep. It was Parker. He was coming over tomorrow with a present for me. The next day, I put on this hot dress that I'd never felt confident enough to wear before, and I asked Camilla to help me do my makeup. As soon as I finished, I eagerly waited for Parker in the living room. The doorbell rang. I excitedly opened the door. But as soon as he saw me, Parker quickly said, Oh, sorry. I have the wrong house. Then he started to leave. Huh? He didn't recognize me? This will be fun. No, honey, you're not mistaken. It's me. Your destiny. Madeline? Is that really you? Oh my, how on earth can you be this big? We've only been apart for a month. So, you don't think I'm prettier now? To my surprise, Parker shook his head. No, no, you're so fat now. It doesn't look okay. Lose some weight. Huh? This was so confusing. I thought he wanted me to be bigger. As annoying as this was, I still listened to Parker and tried to lose the weight I'd put on. <sighs> so, it turns out that losing weight is far trickier than it sounds. Actually, it's a million times harder to lose it than it is to gain it. After a month of healthy eating and exercise, I gained another pound. 
Ugh! Stop eating that. Are you giving up already? You must try harder. What? It's just some popcorn. Why does he have to be so rude about this? I'll give you two weeks to lose weight. Else we're done. Huh? What did he just say? Done? He was the one who wanted me to gain weight in the first place. Now he was threatening to break up with me if I didn't lose it. How ridiculous. You know what? I don't need two weeks. Let's end it right now. It's clear you never loved me at all. You only like my appearance. If you truly cared about me, you wouldn't care what size I was. Then I walked off. Ugh, how could I have been so stupid? For the entirety of my relationship with that jerk Parker, I was blindly following him. I only cared about pleasing him, and it cost me so many things, including my best friend. I needed to apologize to her right away. I nervously knocked on the door, then waited. Finally, Valerie opened it, but on seeing me, she went to shut it. I'm so sorry. Just let me explain, please. Valerie, I'm so sorry. It was all because I was afraid Parker would leave me for you. But I realize now that he's a massive jerk, and I was an idiot for ever trying to change for him. Jeez, you're crazy. Parker is totally not my type. I scratched my head and told her about how terrible Parker had treated me and how I'd foolishly listened to him. Man, that douchebag! Then she hugged me. Valerie confessed to me that she'd been trying to lose weight by lowering her calorie intake, but the pounds were coming off. And worse still, she felt weak and tired all the time. I nodded in agreement with her. So, from then on, Valerie and I made a promise to love ourselves, regardless of what size we were, and to never let anyone try and change us. And look, that's Walker and Joel, our awesome boyfriends who love us just the way we are. And you know what? It feels so good not caring what other people think. So don't ever let idiots put you down. Because when you allow yourself to just be you, then you can finally realize just how beautiful you truly are. Hi, I'm Kate, and I'm doing something totally thrilling. I'm running away. Just picturing my parents' worried faces makes me smile. Why, you ask? They deserve it for trying to send me, their beloved only daughter, to some disgusting girl's boarding school. Yuck! No parties, the grossest uniform, bossy supervisors, and no hot-muscled guys! Ugh! That place is for nerds, not me, an it girl and the founder of Clique Chic our school's exclusive group for the hottest, most sought-after girls. To be a part of the club, you must be really fashionable, you know? I'm talking about a wardrobe full of the latest designer must-haves, manicured nails, and the glossiest hair. Only girls as dazzling as us can make the school hallway our catwalk stage. As one of us, your life will be filled with endless parties and super cute jocks fighting for your attention. Studying and homework? <laughs> That's not our thing. Those loser nerds who are chasing after us will take care of it. Hey, do you know those people? I looked outside and saw a group of bodyguards who were yelling and trying to force my cab to stop. Ugh, this was so uncalled for. 500 bucks if you can get rid of them. The driver immediately sped up. <laughs> Ordinary people will do anything for a little bit of money. He dropped me off at a service station, and I quickly snuck inside and hid in the restrooms. Ew! This place was gross! Gosh! Those bodyguards were loitering about outside so no one could leave or enter without them seeing. How tragic! This was so stupid. All my parents needed to do was let me stay at home for the summer. But no, they sent those bodyguards after me to ruin my life! Suddenly, a cubicle door flung open and knocked into me. Ouch! Are you blind? What are those glasses even for? I... I'm sorry. The girl quickly apologized, then she bent down to pick her fallen stuff up. But when she looked up, I gasped in shock. Holy guacamole! 
What in the world? She looked exactly like me. I mean, at least her face did. Her style was disgusting and old-fashioned. Ew. But given my dire situation, I came up with an amazing idea. Okay, so this is weird. Do you want to make some money? And I mean a lot of money? She gave me this dumbfounded look. Ew. I hope I didn't get frown lines like she did when I screwed up my face. They were ghastly. I have a really lucrative job for you. As you can see, we have similar faces. Freaky, but fortunate. So I need you to pretend to be me and live my rich life for a month or two. Here's my Twitter account. Just skim through it. You can learn everything about me there. It should be enough for you to play the part and avoid my family's suspicion. And here's your payment. I rifled through my bag and handed her the rest of the cash. Jeez, this must be a huge amount for her, as her eyes lit up like she was seeing money for the first time, and she immediately took it. We quickly exchanged clothes, and as instructed, she went outside to hand herself over to the bodyguards. Ah, freedom! Now bring on one long, hot summer of fun. But first, I have to go shopping. Wearing these old-fashioned, disgusting clothes made me want to puke. Oh no! My parents have locked all of my credit cards! I can't even buy a soya milk ice latte now! Oof! How could my parents be so cruel? The worst part is, I had stupidly given all my cash and my phone to that girl! With no other options left, I reluctantly searched the girl's bag. A few old-fashioned clothes, some stupid books, and an unbranded lipstick? Huh? Was that all? How can people live like this? But, hmm, what's this? In her small notebook was a train ticket and an offer letter to work at Homestay Allen. So, looks like she's going there for a summer job. Hopefully that homestay has a bath with scented candles and a pool for me to sunbathe by. I need to work on my tan. I was glad to get off that flea-ridden thing and breathe in some fresh air. Hmm, now where was my ride? There was a short, chubby old man holding a board with the name Clara on it. Ah, the name on the train ticket was Clara. So this meant he was here for me? Ugh, he didn't even have flowers with him, and he could have at least combed his hair. So, turns out, that's Danny the manager and owner of the homestay. Honestly, if it wasn't for the circumstances, I would never have set foot in this stupid place. Oh, how the day got worse. Without even being allowed to rest my weary feet, Danny gave me work. Housekeeping. It was a joke, wasn't it? My nails were not made for menial jobs. Life here was horrible. I had to get up so stupidly early that it was still dark out, then clean a dozen dusty old bedrooms. After that, I would do the laundry, dry the towels and bedding, fold them, and arrange them neatly into each room. At noon, I also had to help the chef here, Anna, prepare lunch, and I was also forced to wash a mountain of gross dishes. I had never done such silly chores like this at home. Instead, they were always done for me didn't expect them to be this exhausting. <laughs> you should put them in order, so they won't break. Ugh, where did this nosy guy come from? Are you lecturing me? I replied crankily and walked away. Suddenly, oh no, this was the ninth time I'd broken stuff since I'd arrived here. And that wasn't counting my poor broken nails. I quickly bent down to clean up, but ouch! I cut my finger on one of the pieces. The guy quickly ran over and bandaged my wound. Bond, that's my name. Huh? What's this? Did he just wink at me? My heart was pounding. Um, I mean, he was cute. Yeah, he was really cute. Um, I'm K- Clara, go do something else. Leave this to me. Realizing that I'd been staring at Bond for a while, I hurriedly got up and rushed to the kitchen. Nice to meet you, Clara. I'm your new colleague. Well, that's not so bad. 
at least I have someone to share my workload with and to chat. The next morning, I was cleaning the floor, half asleep, when Bond came over, put an AirPod in my ear, and winked at me. Imagine you're dancing, then you won't feel so tired anymore. Okay, this sounded kinda lame, but at least no one else was around to see me, so I decided to just go with it. So I gave it a try, with Bond, <laughs> and I relaxed a little. Well, I didn't expect it to be so much fun. That night, as I was about to turn off the light, I heard a knock at the door. It was Bond. He wanted to show me a secret, so he took my hand and led me to the beach. Yes, we were holding hands, and his hand was really warm. He took me to a sandy beach and shone his flashlight at his feet. Something was moving under the fine white sand. Ew! What was that? I clung to his arm in fear. Aww, little turtles, I exclaimed as they slowly emerged from under the sand. Yes, they're cute, aren't they? Let's give them a hand. They have to get to the sea before dawn. I hesitated because I thought this was so stupid. When the sun rises, they'll be easily spotted and eaten by predators. Fine, since Bond pleaded, I had no choice but to sacrifice my sleep to escort the baby turtles to the sea. Why would their mom just abandon her babies like that? Their mom protected them when they were eggs, and now it's time for them to start fending for themselves. I bet they don't mind. You see, they're all trying their best to crawl towards the sea. But it was us who helped them. Then they'll be very grateful to you. And so am I. Whoa, I never felt like this before. It felt like my heart was aching, but in a good way? Thinking about it, I suppose this was the first time I'd ever helped anyone before. Now I kinda understood why my parents did what they did. They just wanted me to be more independent and stop hanging around with those vain, show-off girls. They sure would be pleased if they could see me now, with this sweet and gentle guy. He was the total opposite of the rich boys back home. When I was hurt, he made sure I was okay. He opened my eyes to new experiences, and he didn't try to impress me with dumb flowers and expensive gifts. I've been thinking about Bond all day, and this is the 1,001st time I've peeked at him. I think I'll have to confess my feelings before I go crazy. So that evening, after finishing all my work, I knocked on Bond's door. Huh? Why was a teary-eyed Miss Anna standing there? Then she told me the shocking truth. Bond had left without saying goodbye. Panicked, I walked into the room, but there was nothing left of his. Nothing! No! This couldn't be happening! I hadn't even had a chance to confess yet! The next day, I felt so down, it sucked not having Bond here. But then in my zombie state, I accidentally picked up the newspaper at the front desk. O.M.G. On the front page was a picture of... Bond! God, I couldn't believe it! He was the son of a famous billionaire and they were looking for him! Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd run away from home. But why did he leave so suddenly? He could have told me the truth. He could have said bye! Ugh! My untold feelings for him felt like an unreachable splinter in my side. I couldn't carry on like this. I needed to find Bond. With my meager salary, I got on the train back to the city, imagining seeing Bond again. This is without a doubt the most nervous I'd ever been in my entire life. It didn't matter how much I pleaded my case and explained that I was Bond's friend. The security guards refused to let me in. I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Bond from afar. He was with a girl. What in the world is this? I tried to strain my eyes to see. My god, isn't that me? No, it's the girl I hired to pretend to be me. What was she doing with Bond? And why did they look so close? Could it be? 
I was completely immersed in this beautiful harmony that me and my dad were playing, until... What on earth are you two doing? Startled. I turned around to see Siren standing there with fiery eyes. Oh, God. I came back to my senses at once and realized that next to me, the man I was jamming with was not my dad, but Isaac, her boyfriend. Oh, no. What had I done? I quickly wiped my tears away and was about to leave. But Isaac took my hand and gave me this confused look. Being back here in this house was difficult enough without getting involved in this love triangle, so I tried to pull my hand free and ran out of there. Yes, it's me again, Hazel. In the last part of my story, my friends embroiled me into helping their idol Isaac and his actress girlfriend Siren escape from the public eye for a bit. Now I'm stuck in my family's old home and having to confront my past. All these memories flooded my mind. Some good, some bad. And before I knew it, I was mixing the past with reality. And that's how I accidentally played the piano with Isaac and made Siren green with envy. At that moment, Siren swung open the door and charged toward me. Hey, don't let me catch you flirting with my BF again! Excuse me? What did you say? He's not even my type. Besides, having you as a love rival sounds like way more hassle than it's worth. She gave me this lingering scowl. Clearly she was furious with me, but she must have decided there was nothing else she could say on this matter. However, this didn't stop her from being the most demanding, frustrating diva on the planet. She stuck her nose up at the food and drinks we served her and insisted that she couldn't possibly consume anything that wasn't organic. She threw the clothes that we lent her down the stairs because, quote, those vulgar outfits didn't suit her. Then she asked Ivy to go get her designer ones. Once, Zoe even had to drive over an hour to the mall just for a few scented candles. Why, you ask? Well, Siren accused me of exuding this bad energy that had been affecting her sleep and her well-being, so she needed to cleanse the aura around here. Poof, this was nonsense. Once her head touched the pillow, she slept like a log. It seems that living in the same house as their idol and his girlfriend wasn't exactly all it's cracked up to be. Isn't that right, Ivy and Zoe? However, contrary to Siren the Nightmare, Isaac surprised me quite a lot by actually being a great help around the house. He was an excellent cook and a dab hand at fixing things. Okay, I admit that I used to think he was just one of those useless celebs out there, but... It seems he had no problem with pulling his weight. Anyway, this manner of his did somewhat make up for the obnoxious attitude of his girlfriend, which made this whole thing a bit more bearable. Until this one time. We were rowing on the river near the mansion. Well, I was rowing, to be exact. Just me, as what could we expect from our two superstars? But it's pretty out here, isn't it? It was Siren's bright idea, as she wanted some new Insta photos. You're probably wondering where Zoe and Ivy are. Yep, they're scouring the shops a few towns over for ethical foie gras. Look at her, saying she's feeling sick she couldn't row. But apparently she was well enough to smile for the camera and strike dozens of different poses. Suddenly, Siren decided to stand up to get better lighting, which made the whole boat shake. I shouted at her to sit down, but then before I properly knew what was going on, the boat was turning sideways and I tumbled into the water. I flailed my arms and legs out and tried my best to raise my head above the water, but it was no use. I couldn't stop myself from sinking beneath it. I honestly believed this was it. The world started to darken around me, when suddenly, an arm grabbed me and pulled me ashore. Hazel, can you hear me? I slowly opened my eyes and saw Isaac's worried face peering down at me. Hazel... Thank goodness. He gently helped me sit up, then asked me if I was all right. For a few fleeting moments, the warmth from his body made me flush. Clearly, nearly drowning had made me delirious. I mean, I couldn't have feelings for him. Could I? Before I could ponder on this thought anymore, a drenched siren dripped her way over to us. Isaac, why did you rescue her instead of me? Siren, this is not the time for being dramatic. I was hardly going to come to you, an expert swimmer, over Hazel who was actually drowning. 
Hearing Isaac say that, she rolled her eyes, then stormed off, leaving a wet footprint trail in her wake. The last thing we needed in the house was more tension, so I immediately turned to him and said I was fine, and he should go and sort things out with his girlfriend. Listen, Hazel, Siren's not my girlfriend. I don't like her in that way, but as for you and me, we clearly have a connection. I stared at him in complete open-mouthed shock. Did he really just say that? Or perhaps I had a concussion and was imagining things. Siren's like my little sister. I'll explain this later, but first you need to rest. Then he wrapped his arms around me and guided me back to the house. I spent the rest of that day in bed feeling feverish. Then at dawn the next morning, I awoke to a commotion coming from downstairs. Guys? <sighs> What's all the noise about? It's Isaac and Siren! They've gone! And they've taken the car! What? That was our only mode of transport out of here! How could they be so selfish to just abandon us here like this? We tried contacting Isaac countless times, but no answer. Great. Here we are now in this remote area, where it would take hours to even find a passerby to hitchhike. Not to mention how risky it'd be. Everything was a mess. We were panicking when suddenly the door burst open and walked in a smiling, arm-linked Isaac and Siren. Where have you been? You can't just leave like that without telling us. Oh, Ivy lent us the car. Didn't she say anything? Both Zoe and I turned our gazes on Ivy. She stammered. But, but I think you guys just went out for a while. Not disappeared all night unreachable. Relax. All this tension will give you wrinkles. Then Siren smirked at me as she flicked back her hair and then continued. We went to a drive-in cinema and it was so romantic. We didn't want the evening to end, so we strolled around town until the early hours. What did she mean by that? So much for him seeing her as a sister. I felt like such a fool for believing his lies. We altered our entire plans to help you both hide from society, and this is how you thank us? By pulling a stunt like this? No more. Get out of here! Right now! Before anyone could say anything, my phone buzzed. It was my friend Erica. She asked me if the stories about me being in love with Isaac were true. Huh? What was she on about? In my panic, I ended the call and went online to check it out. Turns out on the Instagram account of the store where I customized our matching hoodies, the shop owner had posted a photo of me wearing it. Naturally, it didn't take the fan maniacs long to do their research and find out all about me. But worse still, another current trending post was one from Isaac's management company, confirming that we were officially dating. What kind of nonsense is this? I immediately told Isaac to call his company and put it on speaker. Isaac, we hit a jackpot! You probably know the iconic pianist and composer Edward Moretz, right? Hazel Moretz is his daughter! You... you mean... Everyone gasped at me in shock. Maybe it's time for me to reveal the secrets of my past, the truth that's been hidden for so long. Yes, Edward Moretz is my father but I made a promise to myself ten years ago that I would never speak to him again. Isaac's manager continued to brazenly talk about how the scandal with me would benefit Isaac's career, so there was no need to hide it. At that moment, Siren shouted, What on earth are you saying? Hey, are you with Siren again? I already told you not to mess with that girl unless you want to get yourself in trouble. Shut up! Siren furiously grabbed Isaac's phone and ended the call. Isaac, tell everyone that the one you love is me, not her. Siren, we were never in love. You're going too far. What? You guys aren't dating? So we misunderstood it all from the beginning? I knew right away there was something wrong. Yet you pretended to be his real girlfriend and treated us like your minions. Siren stood there with a red face, fists clenched. I gave you my heart, but all you do is hurt me. This time, you've made a big mistake, Isaac. Just wait and see. Siren left for her room, but this time neither of us stopped her or comforted her. The next morning, we found out that Siren was gone. None of us knew where she was. We all just hoped that she wasn't so fueled with anger that she'd cause us even more problems. We quickly packed our things into the car 
preparing to return to our normal life, when out of nowhere, a bunch of reporters and journalists appeared and surrounded us. Isaac, Miss Sirenwild has accused Ms. Moretz of wrecking your relationship. Is this true? Does that mean you ran away from all the shows to go on a secret date with Ms. Moretz? Ms. Moretz, your father was known for breaking not only yours, but also another family apart. All for his own selfish needs. Are you following in his footsteps? Scary flashlights were everywhere. Suddenly I found myself transported back to that terrible day ten years ago when Dad's affair went public and the reporters hounded us in this exact same spot. Those heartless flashlights are just as intense now as they were back then. A memory of my mom's distraught face popped into my mind. Puffy eyes, tear-stained cheeks, a fearful look. Yet the reporters were relentless vultures, firing questions at her regardless of her vulnerable state. That's the day I made a promise to myself that not only would I never pursue music, but I'd also never forgive my father. Amid the panic, an arm pulled me into the car, and we drove away from the crowd. It was Isaac. He put on some piano music to help calm me down, and he continued driving, eventually stopping at a small grocery store. Hazel, please drink this. Sorry for dragging you into all this. The thing is, I've been unhappy with my management company for a while now. They won't let me make the music I want to but I didn't expect them to go as low as forcing me into their web of lies just for fame. I know how you feel. I used to long to become a pianist like my dad, but then he crushed my dreams. To further his career, he cheated on my mom with another married woman and left our family behind. I grew to hate the complex world of artists. I vowed to never become one of them. And then I gradually began to despise the sound of the piano, too. I'm sorry to hear that story, but art isn't to blame. It reflects lies genuinely, doesn't it? I heard your piano melodies and you are truly gifted. Be honest with your feelings and don't let anyone else interfere with them. Trying to deny your own passion and emotions will only make you miserable. Isaac's right. I'd let my dad's mistakes alter the pathway to my dreams. Not making music made me miserable. I felt like there was a part of me missing. One that nothing else could fill. Why should I be the one to suffer like this? when it hadn't even been me that done anything wrong. Look at me now. Can you believe it? I've rekindled my passion for piano, and now I'm happier than ever. After all that runway pop star drama, Isaac left his management company and collaborated with me to make music for true art. This is our latest charity event. It's pretty neat, huh? That's all thanks to Zoe and Ivy. They work for us now. They're in charge of arranging our busy schedules and organizing our events. The four of us make the best team. I guess you're wondering what happened to Siren. Last I heard, she set her sights on her latest movie co-star. Hmm. Wish her good luck is all I can say. As for Isaac and me, well, since the media claimed that we were a couple, we might as well have turned that fake news into reality. Hi, Mia here. Not to brag, but since childhood, I've always been kinda a genius. I've already stacked up over 20 science-based awards, and by adding this one more trophy into my collection, I even got to skip a grade. Your achievements at such a young age are admirable. What's your plan next? Well, I've decided to drop out of school. Yep, that's my plan. With this impressive of a profile, I'm just one research paper away from being accepted onto the Space Up Astronomical Research Program. Why waste time on boring classes, right? But ugh, mom and dad didn't like the idea of me not graduating. So after a lot of compromises, I did get to move to Quebec with my grandparents for a year. But I still had to go to school there. And voila, here I am in Canada, ready to conquer my dream. But why was there this angry crowd in front of my new home? They were screaming, cursing, vandalizing. My grandparents secretly signaled me inside the back way, then glumly told me how the crowd were parents of the children who got food poisoning after attending Riverside School summer camp. The problem was, the food was provided by my grandparents' farm, and now the school is threatening to file a lawsuit and doesn't seem to be open for negotiation. That can't be. There must be a solution for this. So gathering up my courage, I knocked on the principal's door. Do I know you? Um, I don't think so, ma'am. I'm Mia Jones, granddaughter of Mr. Peterson, the rancher. Wait, Mia Jones from New York? Hmm, come in. The woman must have been Mrs. Robinson, the principal's wife. But does she know me? As soon as we sat down, she said, 
I will withdraw the charges for you. Oh, ma'am, really? I knew we could sort this out amicably. Oh, but my sweet child, I don't do charity. I know what you're capable of, so I will only drop the lawsuit if you make my daughter the top student at school. In other words, you'll exchange all test results with her. What do you think? What do I think? I think that's a crazy proposition. But if I didn't do this, then the form would go under. So, with a reluctant nod, I agreed. Then I was immediately taken to meet her daughter. I was expecting someone snooty and spoiled, but to my surprise, this super smiley girl greeted me. Hey, I'm Eliana, but just call me Elle. I'm so sorry about my mom. She's got it into her head that I need to excel at school, since my dad is the principal. Elle hesitated for a bit, then continued. Also, there's Nora, the super smart daughter of my dad's ex. Mom doesn't want me to suck and dad to favor this other girl over me, so... Thinking about it, my main purpose for coming here was to complete my astronomical research. I don't need any more A, so I smiled at Elle. Don't worry, I'll make sure you're the star student in no time. The next morning, I went to school with Elle, and wow, it looked so ancient and calm. Definitely distinctive from my stuffy school in New York. Elle introduced me to her friends, and they all seemed really welcoming. It's gonna be great here. Still holding the deal, I helped Elle answer the teacher's questions, exchanged assignments and homework with her, and soon, Elle had already climbed up to the top rank. On the contrary, I was at the bottom of the class. Oh wow, Elle's mom really wasn't kidding when she said her grades were bad. But that didn't matter to me anyway, because the only thing I care about is this amazing astronomy tower. Talk about heaven! What are you doing here? I turned around to see Nora, the girl Elle had mentioned before, who is also the astronomy club's president. Hi, I'm Mia. I want to be part of your team. I have experience in studying astronomy and... Stop blabbering. Your grades suck and we have a strict no idiots allowed policy. I told Nora to at least give me a chance to prove myself, so she sat me down and sniggered as she handed me an astronomy test. Easy peasy, I got all the answers right in just 10 minutes. But instead of welcoming me into the club, she accused me of cheating. Ugh! Nora didn't just dislike me, she also seemed to despise Elle too. Any chance she got to call us out on something, she would definitely take it. Sir, they're cheating! I... I just want to help Mia. Please, I'm so sorry. Huh? Who was helping who? Mia, you've got a lot of nerve. Your test is suspended. The whole class was giving me disapproving looks. Being this disrespected by my peers was a new experience for me. How could Elle tell life so calmly? Great, now that I was labeled a cheater, I would never get accepted into the astronomy club ever. Mia the cheater just had to find her way to get in there then. So, I waited until dark, then sneaked into the janitor's room to steal the key to the observation tower. <sighs> now I could freely study my favorite constellation without any interruptions. Montreal is close to the North Pole, so the night sky here is so clear that I could see all the stars. At this rate, my research could be done faster than expected. Then I would be out of here, leaving all of these childish rivalry dramas behind. One night, I was busy taking notes when someone opened the door and walked in. Who's there? Oh no! I hastily grabbed my papers and escaped through the emergency exit door. Who is the guy? Why is he here at this hour? The next morning, I pushed my way through the noisy crowd and saw the announcement on the school spin board. The astronomy club warned outsiders not to use the observatory room and that there would be severe punishment once the recent trespasser was discovered. Shoot, the guy from last night must have snitched on me. Turned out, the snitch was Brandon, the new transfer student, and also the grandson of the founder of Space Up. It's a shame the incredible Sir Edward Foster's grandson was such a smug jerk. But that didn't stop all the girls from going cuckoo crazy for this Brandon guy. The ironic thing is, he kept on coming over to me and talking about astronomy. Huh? Doesn't everyone here see me as an insignificant kid? Is this yours? Brandon said while holding out a piece of paper. Oh. My. This was part of my astronomy research. Did I drop it in the tower that night? But how did Brandon know it was mine? Flustered, I quickly made an excuse and left. I couldn't stop worrying about Brandon finding out I was the one who used the observatory room. If anyone knows about it, it'd be an instant suspension. 
I was busy thinking when suddenly the whole class burst into applause. As it turned out, they were praising my excellent essay on constellations. Well, it's known as Elle's essay now. Then the teacher turned to read the class's worst essay. My favorite star is Justin Bieber. Every time I see him, I think if only he was my husband. Everyone started laughing. <sighs> no prize for guessing whose name was on this one. Mia, I suggest you learn something from your friend Elle. I turned to look at Elle and saw her smug face. She even joined in with the others to make fun of me. Was she really that stupid to write that essay? Or did she intend to embarrass me? When I got home, Elle was already waiting on the porch to apologize to me. I helped you as promised. Shouldn't your mom keep her promise too? Get the lawsuit dismissed now. Then I'll help you finish your final exam successfully. Else, I'm not doing it. She's on it, Mia. Don't worry. I know you're leaving after a year anyway, and I also know that you're the one who snuck into the observatory. So, if you want to leave peacefully, at least help me and Brandon to get together. You and Brandon? But what does it have to do with me? Elle then told me that Brandon was so impressed by her astronomy essay that he asked her out to discuss it further. But of course, she knew nothing about it, so she had a plan. I'll have my AirPod on, and you gotta stay on the line with me throughout the date so you could tell me the answers to his questions. If we become official, I'll buy you that telescope you bang on about so much. You know, that thingy-majiggy. Celestron! Celestron Telescope! Oh man, she really knew my weak spot. Alright then, we have a deal. That weekend, Elle and Brandon went for a walk in Jerry Park while I stayed at home eavesdropping on their conversation through the phone. I see you have a passion for the Astros. So why didn't you join the astronomy club? Just cause I'm busy with my studies, and I also have piano practice, you know. Really? Oh, in the paper, you mentioned the black hole Sagittarius A. You seem to have done a lot of research about it. Could you tell me more? Although Elle seemed frantic having me put words in her mouth, everything went pretty smoothly. Only one thing. The more Brandon and I talked, the more I realized we had so much in common. Even if it was through Elle, I still felt a connection with him. I thought everything was going well between them, but no. One day, Elle came to me in a fit of anger and said Brandon had turned down her love confession. I want you to go talk to him and figure out why. I need to know the reason. What? Why don't you just ask him? Because I'm me, Eliana Robinson. I don't ask such embarrassing questions. So I was the one who had to make the embarrassing move? Also, call me. I want to hear it myself. Gosh, this bossy girl. And so I had to drag Brandon to the quiet rooftop while my phone was secretly on a call with Elle so she could follow the conversation. Okay, let's get straight to the point. Why did you reject Elle? Um, because I like someone else? If you already like someone else, then why hang out with her? Because only when I go out with Elle, I can talk to the person I like. It's disappointing though, why don't you recognize me? I quickly ended the call hoping Elle didn't understand what was going on. He already knew I was behind Elle's words all this time? It turned out Brandon had met me once in the city's ranking contest for students in 6th grade, in which I surpassed him and won the first prize. He'd never met a kid smarter than him in astronomy before, so when he saw me again at school, he instantly recognized me. Only, he couldn't understand why my score was so low. Brandon wanted to talk to me, but he said that all he received was a cold shoulder. I felt a bit guilty, but it's all because he told the school administration I snuck into the astronomy room. But it turned out Nora was the one who reported me. Nora was there at the time too. By the way, why do you have to do Elle's homework? I told Brandon about my contract with Mrs. Robinson and apologized for not thinking about his feelings when I agreed to be behind his and Elle's date. I see. Follow me. There's something you should know. Brandon took me to see Nora. She didn't welcome me at first, but when Brandon told her about my secret, Nora immediately changed her attitude. I should've known. Someone like Elle couldn't make such progress. She and her mom are deceiving everyone again. Then, Nora told me how she was secretly investigating the food poisoning case because, on the day of summer camp, she saw Mrs. Robinson and Elle doing something shady in the school kitchen. Why should I trust you? Elle told me that you have it in for her. So maybe you're just trying to ruin her life. <sighs> Please, why do I have to do that? Believe it or not, your precious best friend is trying to embarrass you in front of the whole school. What is this? In the lecture hall, Elle was sitting in front of a screen which said, Mia's grandpa poisoned us? 
We rushed to the lecture hall to find her there, telling people that my grandparents were the ones that catered spoiled food, and that I had no shame copying her works, cheating many times, and even stealing Brandon from her while they were dating. So she must have figured out that Brandon liked me, huh? Even so, why didn't she talk to me directly? How dare she make things up about me and my family? Before I could do anything, Brandon changed what was on the screen to a video of me winning the Young Minds Intelligence Contest. Everybody started buzzing when they recognized who I was. Someone even spoke loudly. I watched that show. Is that really Mia? Elle's face turned pale as people started doubting her. Then Nora snatched the mic from Elle's hand and said, So, now we've made it clear that Mia isn't dumb at all. Then what about the poisoning at the camp? Did anyone find it strange how only Elle and her mother showed no sign of poison symptoms that day? That's cause they were the ones who poisoned the food and blamed it on Mia's grandparents. The screen continued to show a clip of Elle's mom looking shady as she spoke to some man. She did all that just to ruin Mia's grandparents' good reputation. Then she would hire this man to buy the farm on her behalf for a ridiculously low price. What did you say? Oh my god, the principal has been standing at the door and witnessed everything. Everyone, out! When there were only four of us left in the room, Elle furiously shouted, How dare you! You're just the outcome of your cheater mom, remember? Don't play dumb with me. You're well aware that my mom didn't cheat on Mr. Robinson, and that your mom is the one who lied to him to ruin his and my mom's wedding. And then what? Lying again that you're his daughter to force him to stay with her? You and your mom are awful people. Mr. Robinson stood in between them and stopped the argument. Oh, he didn't look too well either. Turns out, he already knew Nora's mom was wrongfully framed, and didn't cheat on him at all. And that's why he always tried to make it up to Nora. But learning that Elle wasn't his daughter was one big bombshell. After knowing what his wife and daughter did, he decided to resign. He made amends with Nora's mom and they're giving it another go. After the truth came out, Elle and her mom left without a trace. I say, good riddance to bad news. My grandparents were cleared of the food poisoning allegations and now their business is booming again. With Brandon and Nora's help, I collected enough data and finished my assignment with flying colors. Now to quit high school and pursue my dreams. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just going on a short trip to Mont Megantic National Park to see the Northern Lights with Brandon and Nora. I've decided to stay and finish high school here so I can continue pursuing my passion for astronomy with my two... Just one step into the hallway and I could already hear all kinds of whispers going all around. Um, what happened? Did you forget, Sandra? It's Monday. <sighs> oh, not again. Who's the unlucky victim this week? Dorothy! It's Dorothy! <laughs> Look what embarrassing deed she's done! So, it was a photo of the resident mean girl, Dorothy, on a date with some old rich guy. Ben and I had zero interest in those kinds of things, but these kids on the other hand... Hey! There she is! This was the third Monday in a row that our school had turned into this gossiping chaos zone. Why, you ask? Three weeks ago, out of nowhere, a bunch of random QR codes appeared stuck to some of the lockers. Curious, we scanned them and got access to this mysterious blog by someone called Quiet Night. They said they wanted to expose the true face of this prestigious school. So, every Monday at 2am, they would reveal someone's dirty secret. And the first secret belonged to the beloved basketball team captain, Lewis. Turns out he flunked the last match on purpose so the rival school that his secret girlfriend attended would win. At first, everyone doubted it, but then someone found the girlfriend's Twitter where she posted a celebration photo. So, there you go. Everything became clear as day. Lewis immediately lost his captain title and the entire school cancelled him. While everyone was still buzzing with that, already came the next Monday secret. It was Mr. Worthing, our popular math teacher. His classes were known for their top performances. But as it turned out, he had always accidentally leaked the questions to his students before every exam. The rumor reached the principal and he immediately had people look into it. Unfortunately, it was true, so Mr. Worthing was fired. And as you've heard, little Miss Dorothy was the third unfortunate victim. To be honest, she definitely hadn't been the nicest girl. She's a nightmare to all the new kids especially. So when her shameful secret was revealed, everyone seemed to be somewhat satisfied and talked about it non-stop. My BFF, Mary, was no exception, as Dorothy was a rival for her Queen Bee status. 
At lunchtime, we arrived at the cafeteria, but weirdly, nobody lined up to get lunch. They were all looking around at something. Turns out Dorothy was here too. She's sitting alone at a table. Not wanting to miss an opportunity to taunt her longtime rival, Mary rushed straight over there. What's wrong? Your bald lover didn't take you out to lunch today? As soon as those words came out of Mary's mouth, everyone burst out laughing. Benjamin and I had to drag Mary out of there right away to avoid any calamities. What are you guys doing? I'm not done yet. This isn't cool. Let's just stay out of it. What? She deserves it. You know the clearest what a horrible person she is, Sandra. Or have you forgotten how she picked on you? Well, it's true. I was also one of Dorothy's victims when I just got here. Ben and Mary were the ones who stuck up for me. That's also how our precious friendship all started. Ever since then, we've been the iconic trio of the smartest kids at school. Pretty sweet, huh? However, the recent dramas have undeniably affected our studies. It's like students are coming here just to gossip and they keep chatting in class, making concentrating extra hard. Monday mornings became the biggest event in school. Everyone looked forward to it, guessing who's the next chosen one, as the embarrassing secrets continued seeping out. How Justin looks cool chewing his gum all the time, but he actually does this to mask his bad breath problem. Hardworking Julia bought her essays off the internet. The parking lot car spray painter turned out to be none other than Goody Two Shoes Brandon. It became apparent that any one of us could be next. So people started to panic, praying that their name wouldn't be mentioned. Every Monday morning, I arrived at school to see everyone looking like zombies, cause they'd all stayed up all night waiting for the quiet night's post. The mystery blogger had to be one of us to know all kinds of personal secrets like this, so everyone became extra cautious of each other. It's a mess and this has to stop. We needed to figure out who the quiet night was and stop this, but Mary wasn't convinced. How are we supposed to find them? There's zero clue. Stop wasting time. Let's just focus on studying, Sandra. There's no way they didn't leave any trace. We just have to stand up together. Nope. If you want to, then just do it alone. What's wrong with you? Weren't you usually the first one to avoid dramas like these? Because we could be next. So what? I'm not scared. I have nothing to hide. Then she left in a sulky manner. Mary might not care, but I did. I spent the night trying to piece the clues together when my phone had a pop-up. Ugh, was it 2 a.m. already? Who could it be this week? I pressed to see. It's Mary! Oh no, is it about that thing? Yep, that's it. The secret about Mary's background has been revealed. Her parents aren't successful business owners, and of course, Mary is not a rich mistress like how she always acted like either. I accidentally found out about this when I saw her bargaining about the rent in front of a small house in the suburbs. When I asked Mary why she had to lie like that, she just got all defensive. What do you know? If people knew the truth, they would laugh in my face. I, of course, didn't want to hurt Mary, so I always kept it a secret. <sighs> but now, everyone has found out in the worst way. The next day, Ben and I saw Mary walking toward us, looking exhausted, while everyone's eyes were on her. Yo, how'd you think she's able to afford those flashy outfits? Didn't that blogger say she always wears cheap secondhand clothes? Pathetic. Hearing those words, Ben and I gave those kids death stares and rushed to get Mary out of the crowd, but she suddenly snapped at me. Sandra, you're behind all of this, aren't you? Huh? What? Mary, what? What do you mean? Why would I do that? You're the only one who knew my secret. If it wasn't you, who else could it be? You are the quiet knight. What she said quickly caught everyone's attention, and I felt everyone's curious eyes fixed on us. Mary, that's not right. Remember, it's Sandra who called on everyone to find the culprit. That was clearly a distraction to fool everyone. Mary then continued explaining her reasonings for why she suspected me. The blogger only ever typed in lowercase just like I always did, and she also mentioned my habit of staying up late. To make it even worse, the next Monday, that blogger suddenly stopped posting, making everyone certain it was me. So I was instantly labeled a traitor to my friends and even a germ who raised hatred among students in this school. Everywhere I went, people badmouthed me, and no one except for Benjamin wanted to sit by me at lunch. I wasn't even allowed in the library anymore, as everyone would be talking about me which would cause disturbance. Worst of all, the teachers hated me too. One time in math class, I volunteered to solve a difficult equation. 
But all I got back from the teacher was, Sandra, if only you just used your intelligence for studying, not for messing up other people's lives. Then everyone heartlessly laughed at my face. The tension was draining me, so I went out to take a breather. After recess, I got back to the classroom to find a box in my desk drawer. Oh no, wasn't it the love letters I'd written for Lewis? I mean, yes, I used to have a crush on the basketball captain, but it was a long time ago, and I never sent the letters. How come they are all here? I sure had hidden them in the corner of my locker. Is it the creepy quiet night messing with me? Ugh, that's enough. I gotta unmask this jerk ASAP. Hmm, who could it be? Who had the ability to spy on people undetected? I was trying to figure this out when a smug-looking Dorothy appeared. Jeez, look at her. Can't believe she's the coward who destroys what she couldn't have. Too bad for Lewis that he ended up involved in this. Oh, such a pathetic little girl. Doesn't even have the guts to send any of the letters. <laughs> oh my god. Did they just say letters? What letters? What on earth are you talking about? There's no mistaking your handwriting. She showed me bunches of photos of my letters. Oh no, did she take revenge on me because she thought I was the snitch of her dating news? Not leaving me a chance to explain, they just laughed and continued mocking me. I couldn't face going to school and being tormented for something I didn't even do. So I faked being sick to stay home for a few days. But it's been a week and I still didn't feel better. Suddenly, there was a strange sound by the window. Turns out, it was Benjamin. Sandra, please stop hiding away. You can't let them beat you. You're better than this. What else can I do? Everyone's convinced it was me. Follow me. I know someone who can help. Now, I was sitting in a cafe with Benjamin, and Max, an IT genius in our school. Benjamin insisted this guy could help identify the anonymous blogger. After just a few minutes of checking the IP, Max has been able to track it down. But, huh? It led to Mary's place? Huh? No way. This makes no sense. I gotta talk to Mary. Calm down. Don't say a word about this to anyone for now. Just let me take care of it. I had no clue what Benjamin was planning. He said he would help me clear up the case, but nothing happened for days. Until now, he insisted I'd come to watch this basketball game. What's the point? It just gave others a chance to mock me further. While immersed in my thoughts, suddenly, I heard someone's voice on the loudspeaker. It was Benjamin. Hi everyone, I'm sure you guys are tired of the Quiet Nights blog by now, right? Yeah, at first, I just wanted to entertain you all a bit after boring hours of studying. But I guess it's no longer fun, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry then, I'll stop now. Thanks for tuning in. What on earth is he doing? Now, the entire sports hall was buzzing. Is it really you? Benjamin was about to reply when Mary jumped out. No, it can't be you. Stop wasting time protecting Sandra. How could you possibly know where her love letters were kept? Or about Dorothy's secret? So, you tell me. Who knew those things then? Mary looked taken aback and confused. Then Dorothy appeared. It's her. It's her who gave me Sandra's locker key. Wh what? So it really was Mary. I was still hoping that Ben's friend made a mistake somewhere instead, but... Why, Mary? I don't understand. Of course you don't. You're not in my shoes to judge. Turns out at first, Mary created the blog for the sole purpose of getting revenge on Lewis for being a cheater. He always told Mary that he wanted to date in secret to avoid peering eyes, but it was just an excuse so he could sneak around with other girls. Which is why this was news to both Ben and me. How about the math teacher? What has he ever done to you? He had no work ethic, so he deserved it. I always studied really hard, but he said that girls like me only ever cared about our appearance. He still thought my good grades were from copying these two. And you, Dorothy, it serves you right for the arrogant habit of bossing newbies around. Then she blatantly left the crowd as if she had nothing to do with the school drama all this time. I tried to chase after her, but I was stuck amid this angry crowd. There's still something she hasn't explained yet. The following days, Mary still went to school, but all of the other students isolated her. Benjamin and I tried to approach her, but she went out of her way to avoid us. So, after school, we decided to follow her. We saw her going to the cafeteria, but not to buy things, but to help the lunch lady clean up. Mary, stop being like this. You've still got a friend in me, but don't you think I deserve an explanation too? She then finally sat down and talked to us. 
Mary would have stopped after exposing the three people she hated, but when she saw everyone eagerly waiting for the news every Monday, she found it interesting and continued to bring up other embarrassing things. But then, when things started getting serious, she panicked and looked for someone to blame, and that person was me! Because I was the one who first came up with the idea of tracking down this anonymous blogger. Furthermore, she was angry with me for finding out her secret. Envious because I got better grades than her, and jealous because I was closer to Ben than she was. Mary admitted she felt outshined and left out. So, you decided to expose your own secret you kept for so long just to frame me? Do you hate me that much? No, no, Sandra, it's not like that. I'm really sorry. As for that secret, I had tried to act like a hot girl from a rich family just to be worthy of that jerk Louis. But since I know he's a bad guy, there's no point of keeping that secret anyway. Ben and I leaned over and hugged her, saying it was all okay. As long as we are honest from now on, we'd be able to sort everything out. After that, we helped Mary clean up the messy tables in the cafeteria. And can you believe it? The lunch lady is actually Mary's mother. She was the one who unintentionally told Mary all the petty secrets that everyone gossiped about while getting lunch. Mary has always hidden the fact her mom's the lunch lady, but after being exposed and boycotted, she gave up and decided not to try hard for the popular girl title anymore, but just to be herself. I knew that this was hard for Mary, but deep down, she has a good heart, else she wouldn't have befriended me when I first started at this school. Living up to the expectations of being the school's it girl must have been exhausting. It's been a semester full of drama, hasn't it? Phew, lucky it's almost over. Now we're in a hurry to revise all lessons together to prepare finals week. We still compete with each other a lot, but this time it's fair and square. The three of us already decided that whoever gets the lowest score will have to take the other two out for dinner. Free food, here I come, as I definitely am not going to lose. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aubrey, a super smart girl with an IQ of 200, and you should be ready for my mind-blowing story. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I grew up in a small village in the countryside where people farm for a living. My family struggled to put food on the table, so I could only attend a monastery school. But since childhood, I've always been kind of different. The system is crashing. Please wait for a moment. The chicken is $15.55 minus 15%, cereal is $2.49, potatoes, laundry detergent, so the total comes to $64.85 with the discounts and tax included. Mom soon realized I was a gifted child, so she helped me skip some grades, and by the age of five, I was already doing secondary school math. I always topped my classes, and other students would bribe me with candies to ask for help with their homework. At the age of eight, I scored 760 on the SAT math and won the spelling bee competition. I became a phenomenon in the area, and reporters even gave me the Stanford Bennett IQ test, which showed I had the same intelligence as a 22-year and 11-month-old person. My parents were super proud of me, especially my dad. Dad, they all gave me Lego and comics for rewards, as if I was an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah, they're wrong. You're eight years and five months old already, little lady. He was the only one who could spark interesting conversations with me. That is, until he felt terribly ill. But good surgeons were nowhere to be found in this remote countryside, and we couldn't afford to take him to the center either. We were desperate to see a situation get worse and worse. Then he passed away, leaving us in the depths of despair. Soon after, Mom couldn't afford my school fees anymore, so I had to drop out. Aubrey, I'm so sorry. Don't worry, Mom. There's nothing that school can teach that I can't learn by myself. So she signed me up for a library membership, and turned out the best memories I cherished were here, where I could immerse myself in interesting knowledge from all around the world. I was walking down the aisle, absentmindedly running my fingers along the spines of the books, when one caught my eye. And the memories of my dad rushed back to me. If he had been operated on, he'd not have lost. I started turning the first few pages and was captivated immediately. Then suddenly, a fiery desire sparked in my heart. I want to become a surgeon. So I studied every medical book I could find, especially the ones from this author, and decided to save money to enter medical school as soon as possible. To get closer to my dream, I moved out to the city and applied for a job at a coffee shop right next to the medical school. Only... You've broken 10 plates this week already. Are you trying to break a record? Come on, boss. It's just some plates. Not like I burned the whole shop or something. This will be deducted from your salary. Repeat this and you'll be fired. 
Okay, that's my fault, but I knew he wouldn't fire me. There's no one else who could memorize so many orders all at once, even Diner Dash Master. Later, I was going to serve a group of students when I heard they were discussing an emergency case. We have to remove that blood clot in segment four of the liver and flush the left lobe. Definitely have to start at the middle hepatic vein. Is this dude serious? Absolutely not. A less intrusive cut would be along the falciform ligament to allow access to segment three. Everyone fell silent and looked at me like I was an alien. Suddenly, the middle-aged man among them stood up. Nice work, young lady. Your method is much more efficient than my student's answer. Which class are you in? Oh, I'm not a medical student, but I aspire to be one day. The man asked me to sit down and continued asking me other medical questions, and I answered them all with ease. My adrenaline was rushing. Since my dad passed away, I hadn't had such an interesting discussion. Then, a few days later, the man came back and revealed that he was Dr. Sean Lewis in the principal of the medical school. OMG, you're my favorite author! I admire you so much! Thank you, young lady. Anyway, I came here today with an offer. I was impressed by the knowledge you have in the medical field, and I think you deserve a full expense scholarship to the most prestigious medical school. Can someone pinch me now? This was truly a blessing from heaven that I would definitely not let slip away. Here comes my first day. I went to school extra early to explore as much of the campus as possible. This place was so much bigger and better equipped than my old school. I was looking around the hallway to find my class when someone bumped into me. Oh, isn't it the gave the wrong answer guy at the cafe? He just coldly said sorry and hastily headed to the class over there. 412? It's my class too. I learned that he was Henry, the top student of the class. But obviously, he wasn't that good. They'll see. All the theoretical classes didn't make me break a sweat, and I even spotted some mistakes made by the professors. When lunch rolled around, I went to the cafeteria, approaching the first group that caught my eye, and they seemed to be friendly. Want some of my fries? Potato fries contain a high amount of trans fat, which is associated with type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. One day you'll have a stroke, and then you'll know why. Thank me later. They all pouted and left right away. Did I say something wrong? Right then, a nice girl came to me. I'm Laura. Mind if I sit? Sure. Then she told me she was isolated too, just because she wasn't as smart as the other students here. Why are they so mean? Hey, why you gotta be bothered by those toxic people? Do they give you a penny for your thoughts? It's not about how many friends you make. It's about finding one that knows your worth. You're right. I'm Aubrey, by the way. I know, I was in the same class with you this morning. And the way you argue with our professor? Wow, that's impressive. Laura and I quickly became friends. It's great to have her around who could truly see my brilliance and always encouraged me to express myself. Today came a big event. A conference was held by none other than Dr. Lewis. But little did I know that this event would become a battleground between Henry and I. Determined to impress Dr. Lewis, I eagerly raised my hand at every opportunity to answer his inquiries. Each time I did, Henry would swiftly raise his hand as well, competing for Dr. Lewis's attention. We argued back and forth, neither backing down until the end of the conference. After that, Dr. Lewis announced that there was one slot available in his upcoming research project, which would go to the top student of this term. The room buzzed with excitement and anticipation. My heart skipped a beat, for working with Dr. Lewis had been a lifelong dream. However, other students started cheering Henry's name. Jeez, I swore I would beat his butt off and show them who deserved it. Time to prove that I was not only unmatched in theory, but also in practice. I was the very first one to finish stitching up the incision. Uh-huh. But as I reached for my gauze, I couldn't find it anywhere. It must be around here, I swear. Oh no, I left it inside the dummy. Okay, this time must be better. How hard could it be to use this defibrillator? But then I accidentally touched the metal pad and got shocked and fell backward. I kept trying in many other practice sessions, but that sucked. Aubrey, this cast looks exactly like a chicken thigh. Do it again. But the most annoying thing was that Henry excelled in all of them and other students started mocking me. After that, I went outside for some fresh air and deep down, I was so disappointed in myself for all my failures. Suddenly, a hand gently patted my shoulder. It was Laura. I couldn't help but hug her and start sobbing. Laura, what if I was wrong about myself? I failed at everything and people started humiliating me. Oh, they just envy you. Nobody can beat your academic scores. That's why they gloated at your failure in practice. But that big brain of yours is what matters the most, right? 
Yeah? And an opportunity is coming your way. There's an intelligence contest next week. If you win, everyone will have to recognize that you're the best, including Henry. Talk about Laura, my savior. I'll try my best. Just wait and see. A few days later, Laura took me to the library in a private study room. She helped me set up my laptop and left me alone so I could focus. Good luck. I participated in an online oral contest over Skype. There was a panel of judges who asked questions, and all I had to do was answer them verbally. Easy peasy. Now I just need to wait for the results. The next day, I went to school as usual, but then suddenly was called to the principal's office. Dr. Lewis might have known about that competition and saw my name on the top list. I was about to brag about my performance when he accused me of helping other students cheat on their exam. Then he showed me a voice recording of me answering the questions. Wasn't that for the intelligence contest? But Laura said, Dr. Lewis, just wait. I can explain. I frantically called Laura, but she refused to pick up. Enough. I'm so disappointed in you. You're expelled from this moment. Feeling lost and crushed, I trudged myself to a bench in the schoolyard. Hey, are you okay? Okay? You're mocking me? Now that project slot is yours. Happy much? Get out of my sight now! Suddenly a stack of papers fell onto my lap. You might need this. Good luck. I believe you're not a cheater. I confusedly flipped through those papers to see that these were all of Henry's notes from the semester for practice lessons, which could not be found in normal textbooks or lectures. I kept on turning to the last page and saw a scribble. Know your worth. Something awakened inside me, so I swallowed my pride and ran after Henry. Hey, wait! I I've been wrong about you the whole time. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's my fault to act competitively, too. I had no bad intentions. It was just the motivation for me to study harder. I swear. But it's a pity if the medical industry loses someone like you. Um, well, I'm not so sure anymore. I'm used to doing everything so quickly, and I can't be patient, which probably explains my clumsiness. That I can help with. Genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work, you know. Since then, I often went to Henry's house to practice. We studied together, and he taught me many tips to stay calm, patient, and focused. And turns out, he's also quite the adorable type. Here you go. Thank you, doctor. This is the best stitch I've ever had. One day, I ran into Laura at a gas station. She tried to hide, but I ran straight there to catch her. How could you trick me like that and just disappear like nothing happened? I'm so sorry, Aubrey. I was so blind and just wanted to help those who are bad at studying like me. I never expected it to be that serious and you'd get expelled. And now, why are you here? It's just the medical profession was not my thing, so I quit. But Aubrey, please forgive me. I'm really ashamed of what I did and you were... The only one who had truly been kind to me. <sighs> only when you set things straight and confess everything to Dr. Lewis. But even so, there isn't a likely chance we'll be friends again. So the next day, Henry took Laura and I to see Dr. Lewis. Aubrey? Laura? What are you both doing here? Dr. Lewis, I... I was the one behind the cheating case. Aubrey had no idea and didn't deserve to be punished for my fault. I've been practicing a lot too, sir. Look at these. I've been so careful with every single one. Aubrey has also helped me a lot in our project. I hope you can forgive her and grant her another chance. Dr. Lewis looked quite satisfied, but then he suddenly turned pensive and shook his head. Medical school is not where people can freely join and leave. A doctor needs an extra sharp mind and can be fooled as easily as you were. I'm sorry, Aubrey, but you're not qualified. My heart sank to my toes, and I locked myself inside my apartment for the next couple of days. It wasn't until Henry knocked at my door that I actually went outside. He said he wanted to cheer me up and bring me to his favorite restaurant. I sat down waiting while Henry went to get the drinks. Hey! But a second later, he slipped on the stairs and fell down with a thud with all the broken glass scattering around. It's all right. I, I think I only twisted my ankle. Not a big deal. But my stomach dropped when I noticed a trail of blood on the floor and something protruding from his ankle. A large shard of glass. I swiftly dialed a 911 while Henry winced in pain. Aubrey, you have to administer first aid. Oh, right. I called for the restaurant staff to get the first aid kit, but it was clear that the situation was dire. Henry's face grew pale as blood continued to trickle from the wound. I held the wound closed to stop the blood, but my heart felt weak. I couldn't bear to see him suffer. You trust me, Henry? What do you mean? Yes? So I immediately pulled out the toolkit that I brought around in my purse. Henry bit down on the tablecloth beside us, and I started the procedure. 
I maintained a steady stream of chatter, trying to distract him from the pain, but it wasn't helping. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What? Just to distract myself from the pain. Okay, go ahead. Stand a little taller. And done. When I looked up, there was a crowd cheering in awe and admiration. Guys, I caught the whole thing live. The video of the incident quickly went viral. That night, I tossed and turned in bed, unable to contain my excitement. I saved a human life. Reading the comments of the video filled me with a renewed sense of motivation to pursue my dream. The following morning, I was jolted awake by a notification on my phone. It was an email from Dr. Lewis himself. I headed to Dr. Lewis's office, and to my surprise, he told me he saw the video and gently said, Aubrey, I was once like you, arrogant and overly reliant on my natural intelligence. Then, a mistaken surgery left me with regret that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. However, after watching the video, I'm glad that you changed. I saw your humility and eagerness to learn, so I'll give you another chance. So, here I am. You have no idea how much I miss this hallway. Welcome back. How's your ankle doing? Much better, thanks to you. How about a celebration dinner tonight? Sounds great, but promise you won't need me to operate on you again. I was scared to death. Ahead of me still lay a long road, but I believe the day I become a skilled surgeon is closer than ever. And soon, I can perform more life-saving surgeries for the less fortunate. Da I stood in front of this shabby cottage. <sighs> trying to calm myself, and went inside. One step in, and the door snapped shut. I freaked out and banged on the door. Let me out! Let me out! But only ghastly laughter resounded. Just then, I could feel someone coming close to me. I turned around and was terrified by what I saw. Hey, Clover here, the one that just got scared witless. I know, so embarrassing. Let me tell you how I got myself into that situation in the first place. But before I do, please like and subscribe. I used to have everything. I come from a family of esteemed cardiologists who's made numerous contributions to the medical field. And as the next generation of Howards, I took immense pride in continuing their legacy, which was getting a Harvard medical degree and becoming a doctor. That's why I always made sure my academic record was top notch. I went to this elite private school, aced every subject, and became the class president. Finally, winter dance prepping's finished, so I could sit back and watch this magical night come to life. Suddenly, my phone got a notice. It's an article about my parents and how they were involved in an operation that cost a patient's life. No way was this real. But when I looked up, everyone was giving me bombastic side eyes. Jeez, I should go to my parents now. I had to ask as soon as I found them. Mom, Dad, what the press is saying isn't true, right? Honey, listen. When the patient was brought in, there wasn't much we could do for her. It was too late. Turns out, she's from the Albert family, a very powerful family in the country. They didn't take it too well, especially her son. He blamed my parents for his mom's passing, meaning this media crisis was his doing. My parents explained to him many times, but to no avail. Now he even took legal actions against them. They had no choice but to show up in court. The incident quickly became the talk of the town. Everyone was throwing jibes at us. Gosh, all these turmoils were driving me insane. Clover, can you solve this equation? Clover? Clover! Stop! The whole room turned silent for a second and stared at me like I was some freak. I picked up my books and stormed right out of class, but still, whispers followed me everywhere I went. There was no other place for me to be, so I just ran home and wept tears of frustration. My parents came in all worried for me. They thought maybe it's best if I stayed at my aunt's place. But mom, dad, I can't just leave you here. You're not leaving us. It's just that things are messy right now, and we don't want you to be affected. Besides, it's just temporary. Once the lawsuit's over, we'll reunite. Promise? Promise. When I arrived at my aunt's house, she seemed annoyed. Your room's in the attic. You're just here temporarily, so do not make any fuss. It's bad enough your parents got slapped with a lawsuit. Just then, I got a text. Mom's checking in on me. I shouldn't worry her, right? But honestly... I'm not sure how I'd survive this place. First day of school, I had to ride this pile of junk here. Cycling alone made me sweat like a dog. Just then, a boy passed by and yelled at me. Hey, you got a fat side! Excuse me? I said, you got a flat tire! Oh, that explains a lot. He helped me fix it. 
A few minutes later, the bike was good to go. The guy's Percy. He went to the same school as me, and today was also his first day. So, we arrived at school together. As soon as we entered the hallway, everyone stared at us. Suddenly, two girls came dragging me aside. Who are you? Why are you with Percy? You're not his girlfriend, right? Jeez, I met him ten minutes ago. I don't even know who he is. OMG, you live under a rock or something? He's Percy Albert, the sole heir of the powerful Albert family. That name. Could it be a coincidence? The son that insisted on suing my parents went to the same school as me? Hold on, Clover. This could be your chance to manipulate him into withdrawing the lawsuit. And boom! Things could go back the way they were. Hmm. Let's see. I could make him fall for me. People would do anything for love, right? Lucky me, Percy and I were in the same biology class where we worked in pairs. The two girls from before, Holly and Jody, started fighting to be his lab partner. Meanwhile, he straight up asked me. Well, well, not a finger lifted and the prey was already in my trap. That night, I went on his social media account and found out he often golfed at Rolling Greens. I could be a caddy, just had to apply for the position. I got accepted in no time and quickly got used to the job. Oh, and I just happened to go through Percy's golfing schedule and totally did not plan this chance encounter. I parked the golf cart ready to seduce my Ken doll, but somehow standing in front of me was Holly and Jody. What took you so long? Do you know how hot it gets? At least I still got a chance with him on the field. But as soon as these blondies caught sight of Percy, they flew towards him like moths to a flame. So I was left to carry these human-sized bags. Ew, she's stinking with sweat. Social distance, please. Stop, you're being mean. Clover, let me help you with that. Thanks. You came to my rescue again. No worries. Say, I didn't know you worked here. Yeah, I'm pretty good at golf. By the way, for your 50-yard shot, you might want to use this club. Center yourself and give it a good backswing. Percy took my advice and caught a strike. Already? Hey, how would you like to be my personal caddy? Hmm, I don't know. Come on, help a guy out. Okay, on one condition. When the time's right, I'll use this card. When exactly? I'm so intrigued right now. <laughs> you just wait. From then on, we always stick together golfing and hiding from Holly and Jody. Hey, are you free this Saturday? Since you helped me out and everything, I, um, want to repay you. Yes, my plan worked. I was so happy I could jump up and scream. But that only happened inside my head. I still gotta play it cool. Only if it's a date. Saturday came and we took a trolley downtown to watch the streets in the fall. Look at how pretty the golden leaves are. We then stopped at this carnival. And I gotta admit, Percy seemed genuinely sweet. He protected me from the rushing crowd, held my hand when I was petrified on the Ferris wheel. His caring gestures had my heart racing a bit, and also wondered, how could this guy resent my parents that much? As the last ray of sunlight disappeared, the carnival lit up, and Percy's eyes suddenly looked so dreamy. Snap out of it, Clover! You're supposed to make him fall for you, not the other way around! The ride ended and I immediately went to get some refreshments to calm myself down. But holy cow, I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. What do I do? Excuse me, I'll pay for her. How much is it? Thank you so much. I owe you big time. No worries. Please, at least give me your contact. I'll pay you back. Is that your way of asking me out? No, I... Well, if your boyfriend doesn't mind, give me your hand. Meet me at Caribou's Coffee Shop, 8 a.m. Sunday. Here, treat. After the date, I was sure Percy had feelings for me. I just needed to make him say it. Then I spotted Dumb and Dumber sneaking around my locker. They're trying to fake a note from Percy to me. Tell her to meet Percy at the haunted house in the woods. Then we'll trap her inside. Hmm, lame pranks. But I suppose I can go along with them and get Percy all worked up. Nice. And of course, gotta let Percy know where I was heading. I know this was a stupid prank, but the eerie vibe still gave me the creep. I stood in front of this shabby cottage, <sighs> trying to calm myself and went inside. One step in and the door snapped shut. I freaked out, banged on the door. Let me out, let me out, but no use. Only the sound of ghastly laughter resounded. Just then, I could sense someone coming closer to me. I turned around, so terrified, blood drained from my face. Oh my ghost! Stop shrieking, stupid child. I'm not a ghost yet. He, he's a real person? Clover, don't worry. It's just my grandpa. Grandpa? What's your grandpa doing here? Um, this is my house. 
So this used to be his granddad's house when he was young. Since Percy's mom passed away, grandpa's health deteriorated. No one in the family cared about him except Percy, as they were all deep in sorrow and hatred. Percy mourned for his mom too, but had to stay strong for his grandpa. So he brought him back to this peaceful house, hoping grandpa would feel better. At that moment, I felt bad for what happened to Percy and his family. Losing their loved one must have been so painful. I suddenly understood his motive now, and he badly needed this hug. Clover, I think I'm in love with you. I gushed over his words. Looking in his eyes, I knew it was real, and what I felt for him was also genuine. We could work this out, right? I'd tell him the truth and my side of the story. He'd understand. Percy, I love- But one phone call from mom changed everything. Honey- we lost the case. Their son has taken everything away from us. Our property, our legacy. Your dad was so distressed, he almost had a heart attack. Hearing mom's words, tears started streaming down my cheeks. What was I thinking? How could we possibly be together? After that, I avoided Percy completely. I also decided to move out of my aunt's and find a new place. And guess who hooked me up? It's Hunter, the guy I met at the carnival. We did end up going on a coffee date. He seemed cool and knew his way around town. So I asked if he knew a place that me and my parents could stay, as they'd move here soon. Look at this. Pretty cozy, huh? Hunter was nice enough to help me move. Just then, there's a knock on the door. I opened it to see Percy. He got so worried and went looking for me. But once he saw Hunter, he was dumbstruck. Didn't expect you'd find this place so fast, brother. Wait, you two are brothers? Sadly, yes. And we're supposed to mourn for our late mother. Yet here he is playing lovebirds with you. If losing mom isn't that big of a deal for him, let's see how he'd like losing you. Don't you dare touch her. Or what? You'll punch me? You Alberts are the worst. Was ruining my family not enough? What are you talking about? I'm Clover Howard. My parents were the doctors who tried to save your mom, but got punished for that. I was so stupid to think I could convince you to drop the lawsuit. My family's in shambles now. Happy? I, I didn't know. Get out. Never come near me again. Percy had to haul off with a regretful look. A few days later, my parents arrived. I told them everything that had happened, but they said the son who pressed charges was actually Hunter, not Percy. Turns out, their family situation was complicated. Hunter went missing when he was seven, and not until recently did he return. But then his mom unexpectedly passed away. He must have been so miserable that he had to take it out on us. Percy, on the other hand, was really thoughtful and understanding. He did all he could to stop his brother, and I just put it all on him. I had to go fix this. When I got to the cottage, Percy was trying to stop Hunter from messing with my family again. You don't get a say in this. You grew up with mom's love while I got nothing, and you couldn't even pay her proper respect. We can mourn her in different ways. Mom wouldn't want us to dive deep in hatred. <laughs> mom wouldn't want us to befriend people who couldn't save her. And you fell in love with their daughter? Traitor! Hunter was about to punch Percy. I had to stop him. Quick! Clover? You should leave now. No, I came here to apologize to you. We gotta work things out. Then let's have a little chit-chat, shall we? I was so close to having a taste of Hunter's fist when Percy came between us and took the full blow. We both ended up on the floor. And when we looked up, their grandpa was already there and witnessed everything. Percy, Hunter, stop fighting! His breath suddenly fell short. His knees were trembling. I immediately called my parents for help, but Hunter snatched my wrist. What are you doing? Call your parents here to mock us? No, I'm just trying to help. He then was on the phone with their family doctor, but she couldn't come because there was a storm blocking all roads. Please, can't you see Grandpa's in pain? You shut it. I'd never get help from those lousy doctors again. Hunter, I'm sorry for what happened. I really am. But don't let your hatred endanger your granddad. I could see Hunter's conflict, but with every second passed, their grandpa became pale. His breath got weaker. He needed to decide now. P please save him. I immediately called my parents. Minutes later, they arrived and gave him first aid right away. Luckily, Grandpa reacted positively to the medication and gradually recovered. Hunter then broke down in tears. I can't believe I almost put Grandpa in danger just because of my blind hatred. And you didn't think twice about helping. I, I'm so, so sorry, everyone. Clover, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, I promise I'll make this right. 
The following day, Hunter arranged a press conference admitting he was wrong to bring my parents to court. Thus, he'd take full responsibility in fixing his mistakes, including clearing our reputation and compensating us financially. When it's settled, we started a new life here. My parents bought a house, founded this hospital to help people, while I got to continue my dream of becoming a doctor. Harvard meds, here I come! Oops, almost forgot. Of course, Percy and I got together. You didn't think we went through all that, and I never admitted my feelings, did you? I'd been holding it back for what felt like forever. Now, I get to have my happy ending. Hey, what's the matter with you? Don't think you're better because you help everyone you see. Oh, so now we're being honest? Fine, my turn. I didn't listen to what everyone said about you and still became your friend. Turns out they're all right after all. Like father, like daughter. What are you talking about? You... You you knew everything? Yeah, I'm not dumb, and that's not all. Now I finally believe my dad died in that fire because of your dad's negligence. His dad was among the victims in that fire? My feet wouldn't move, and my muscles were constricting from shock for a while before I could drag my heavy heart and crumbled thoughts to somewhere else. I'm sorry about his dad, but I'm in pain too. It's not just because the boy I like was cruel to me, but also because, as it turns out, he's no different from everyone else. Devastated, I unknowingly brought myself to the gymnasium. Wait, my self-defense club? They're still practicing? Wow, hard at work already. Amazing. Shut up! Why are you even here? Then their insurrection began. Just quit already. We're not here to entertain you. Your careless, irresponsible behavior has said enough. You don't even know why we need to learn how to defend ourselves. You never cared about us in the first place. Don't even bother pretending. Leave. Okay, fine. I won't stay where I'm not welcome. Bye, then. Home at last. I was gonna take my frowny face straight to my room, but couldn't hide it from Dad. Sweetie, why the long face? How are you so cheery all the time? Life's beautiful, and we get to see it every day, no? I hate it. I hate to see you get all the blame while doing nothing but good deeds. How everyone's mocking us. But above all, I hate how you always have that happy-go-lucky smile. Even though people treat you like the butt of their jokes. I hate trying to be a hero like you said. But I can't stand pretending to be weak either. I hate everything! Honey, they might think the worst of us. But that doesn't mean we have to be so pessimistic and indifferent. Then we're no better than them, aren't we? You can't change the way people see you or be anyone but yourself. Perhaps one day we might manifest something good to the universe. But first, we need to be good people. His words actually woke up something in me. Was I wrong about everything all this time? In the following days, Aaron and I ran into each other a couple of times, but we both avoided eye contact. <sighs> That one's a dead end, but a boy is not my biggest problem. Now I want to flip the script and start over. But from where? Ah, oh, I know. But wow, everyone immediately got their torches and pitchforks ready at the sight of me. Good afternoon, y'all. What you said the other day got me thinking, and I'm sorry. I want to help, for real. Of course, only if you want me to. Come on, I'm already at the bottom. Give me a chance to go up, huh? No loss for you anyway. They seem convinced, so I got down to business right away. What? You're already cowering? I only swung my arm. Hmm. Looks like what they've been practicing wasn't working, so I decided to put them on a strength-building regimen alongside one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. On top of that, I built each member's profile detailing their weaknesses and how they should be improved. Most of us aren't tall or athletic. How about you show us how to use weapons like pocket knives, nunchucks, and axes? Seriously? <clears throat> Sorry, but swords are only as good as the women who wield them. You'll most likely hurt yourself if you carry those things around. So I came up with the idea of teaching them self-defense using familiar items like backpacks, pens, and heels. And this look? I actually wanted to get rid of it. But I decided to keep it up since this is what most girls wear. This should show them how to protect themselves in the most unexpected situations. Danger won't wait for you to change into appropriate attire. Besides, I'm totally serving this look. Then more students joined our club. I see geeks, nerds, goth chicks, and even popular cheerleaders. Hmm, what brought them here? Hazel once mentioned that they all had a reason to learn self-defense. So I decided to sit everyone down one day. All right, no practice today. I want this club to not only empower us girls physically, but also be a safe space to, you know, talk about ourselves and our problems. Okay, who wants to go first?
I broke the ice by sharing everything that's wrong with my life, why I had such a slappable face, and all things false about my family that everybody liked to say. The girls seemed quite bewildered, then began contributing to the conversation. Well, for me, it's my mom. She got divorced recently, and now she's doing really questionable midlife crisis stuff. I mean, she can do whatever she wants, but I'm still very angry with how she's handling things. So my therapist said I should take up some physical activity to deal with my anger issue. It seems to work, so far. I feel powerless at home too, so I thought learning how to fight would give me the strength I need to stand up against my stepdad. Yeah, I felt helpless many times before, like whenever I reported my stalker to the police, and they said there's nothing they can do. But practicing with you guys made me feel strong and confident, no matter how brutal it can be. Totally. With what we learned here, I felt like one day we could both reverse stalk our stalkers. Jeez. I only wanted to take advantage of these poor girls at the beginning to get out of trouble, and almost abandoned them. What was I thinking? And since then, they'd all got stronger and seemingly more confident through each lesson. Every girl had several bruises, but the brightest smiles were always on their faces. We must have looked like the happiest thugs. One day, when I was enjoying my meal, Betty came and said she wanted to have a word with me in private. I put aside our differences, but then she said this. I'll cut to the chase. Your violent little club is getting more popular and taking away people's attention from what's truly important. Me, uh, my campaign. I don't follow. We exist in completely different spaces. I have nothing to do with your campaign. You know what I'm talking about. All that everyone cares about now is your girl fight club. I'm just concerned that you're planting seeds of violence in other students' minds. That's all. Gosh, I don't need to explain to you, of all people, what I'm doing. If you're worried nobody cares about you anymore, maybe, just maybe, they're tired of your sob story and useless anti-bullying measures. Ugh, you're wasting my time. However, I couldn't have anticipated disaster struck right that evening. Another person was complicit that day, but I was hesitant to point her out because I feared her retribution. But now your love and support have given me strength to do the right thing. That girl was none other than Jamie. She even blatantly lied to the principal that she had self-defense club. But they're nothing but a bunch of thugs in disguise. I am truly terrified for myself and everyone else in this school. Members of the club were on my side. Still, most people chose to believe Betty, including the teachers. And so they shut us down. <sighs> Am I on the right track after all, or should I just return to my old, quiet life? The next day, the whole club came to comfort me. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Never mind her. She already had her army of sims go to war with Team Betty. But from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. I couldn't have done anything without you guys. It's my fault the club shut down. Jamie, we became fighters thanks to you. You're a real one. I was walking home, feeling much better than yesterday, when I saw the last person I want to see. Betty who's with her bullies? Betty, you okay? Never better. See, I'm with my friends. What? Didn't these guys beat you up? We buried the hatchet. Friends for life, right guys? You talk too much. What now? What's the problem? Aaron came flying out of nowhere and pulled me out. Then they tried to pick a fight with him, but Betty prevented it. Then we walked together, no word spoken. When a thank you was on the tip of my tongue, he already went in another direction. Later that day, I found out that Betty owed money to them and almost couldn't pay them back, hence their intimidation. Now that the issue was settled, they're back to being friends. Their friendship made me cringe. I shouldn't bother myself with it since I already knew Betty wasn't all pure and innocent then. The next morning, Betty dragged me aside as soon as I came to school. Looking for your favorite scapegoat? Where are your bestie assailants? Shockingly, she wanted to apologize. Jimmy, I promise it won't happen again. She even said that it was Aaron who told her to change her ways. Welp, it didn't matter anymore. Pretty please, don't tell anyone about this. My parents would shave all my hair and use my shiny bald head as a mirror if they knew. Whatever, I'm no snitch. But how long do you think you can get away with this? People's sympathy will run out one day. Are you going to ask them for another punch to have another sob story? Then I stormed off, leaving her frozen on the spot. <sighs> It's Monday, meaning I was supposed to attend club meeting, but now that we're banned, I don't have anything better to do. So bored. Suddenly, I saw smoke rising from afar. That direction. It's the gym! I acted on instinct and ran towards it. As I approached the fire, I realized it was much bigger than I thought. Worse, I heard someone scream for help from inside. So I hit the fire alarm, but as soon as it sounded, memories of the fire in the past and my dad came rushing to me. It's keeping my feet rooted there. At this point, many people heard the alarm and came to help extinguish the fire. What you standing there for? Give us a hand! 
Ayo, did she cause this? Out of the way, useless. Images of Dad's scarf filled my head. I just want to explode. Is history repeating itself? Are people going to die? Jimmy! 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 I was awoken by the calls of my friends from the club. They're helping too, but this much water and sand couldn't do much to this ever-growing fire. In a split second, I tore out a piece of my shirt, dipped it in some water, then wrapped it around my face before running straight inside the burning building as everyone else gasped at me. The black smoke covered my field of vision. I dashed further inside and showed any survivor I saw the way out. Shockingly, I found Betty, shivering and cowering. I called out her name a couple of times, but no response. Without thinking, I carried her out in my arms. As soon as we got out, I saw Aaron trying to tell me something, but I didn't hear a single word as I was fixated on looking for more survivors in there. Suddenly, fire truck sirens took me out of it and I stopped. Firefighters are here! My dad's here! They swiftly took care of the rest. But my dad's uniform caught on fire, which had to be taken off. That's when he inadvertently revealed his scarred arm. When the fire had been put out and no one was left inside, I rushed over to give my dad the biggest hug. Dad, you're all right. I finally did it. Then some townsfolk came to pick up their kids, and I saw them looking at my dad's scar with this stupid, aghast look on their faces. What are you looking at? Y'all thought a firefighter's body's flawless? This? It's what he got for trying to save you and your family in that tragic fire and all these years. He should have been praised as your hero, but instead, all he got in return is deformity and your ungrateful ass. Dad had to hold me back to stop any further colorful words from coming out of my mouth. Poof. They need to hear that. It took a while before a few people approached my dad, asked him how he was doing, and apologized for mistreating him, as well as disregarding his contribution to the town. Hey, my emotional outburst helped. After that incident, I spent a few days at home. The girls told me that Betty admitted to setting the gym on fire so she could play the victim and be the center of attention once again. Betty only contacted Aaron because she wanted him to save her specifically, but the fire was unexpectedly huge and spread like, well, wildfire. Tragically, Aaron didn't make it in time while Betty was completely unaware of other students in the gym at that time and accidentally trapped them. There's going to be dire consequences for her no matter what. That evening, I answered the door to see a familiar face. Hi. Hi. How are you holding up? I was so worried. Wait, let's go somewhere else. I didn't take Betty's text seriously until I heard you running into the fire. Please forgive me. I'm sorry about the last time we spoke. I was so angry I said all those wrong things about you. I'm very sorry about your dad as well. It's okay, and my family and I should have been thanking your dad and his team. Without them, my mother wouldn't have been around now. That's alright. I wasn't being completely honest either. The truth is, I... I know. Ever since the day we fell out, I kept an eye on you still. I know that's creepy, but I just wanted to know how you're doing. Believe it or not, I secretly came to your self-defense club a couple times and saw what good deeds you're actually doing. And now, would you give me the chance to get to know the real you? Bro, you're sure you want to know me? I've seen that you're more than willing to ditch me and help just about everyone in need, and I'm tired of that. Besides, aren't you into nice, cute, petite girls? Says who? Is this about what I said in English class? It's just so the girls would stop. And the other thing, guess it was a bit misleading, but that's how I instinctively act to everybody because I thought it's what any good person would do. When you finally become my girlfriend, you'll get the special Aaron Taylor treatment. Ahem, that's still not my biggest achievement this school year. I got to be friends with these amazing people. And even though I'm not a true hero, I found a way to help them overcome some of their problems. Would you believe it? I was really happy I did that. And I was- No one told me it's this windy up here. I'll probably be wiped off of Earth before I could wipe all these windows. It's okay, Harper. Remember, you're doing this for Aaron. Just a bit of tough work for now, but imagine the incredible time you'll be having at the concert. Imagine- Oh my god! Aaron! And her? Hold up, let's start from the top. Hi, I'm Harper, the biggest fan of the greatest boy band, The Statics, especially their rapper Aaron. I turned 18 not long ago, and I'm taking a gap year to find my true passion. To be honest, I'm not really interested in anything. The only thing that makes me feel alive right now is fangirling, following my boys around, concerts, touring, etc. But after months of that, I'm totally broke. Not to mention Aaron's having his solo debut album. So, having no choice, I asked my super sweet boyfriend Kirk to lend me some money. But, again, all you ever did was spend relentlessly on this trash. You don't study, nor get a job. How are you expecting to afford it all? Do these idols feed you or give you a roof over your head? I don't think so. 
I can't help you forever either. Trash? He called my passion trash? Excuse me, I asked for a loan. Not like I was robbing him. He wasn't like this the other times. Finally showing his true self, huh? Fine, I don't need an unsupportive boyfriend. Anyone that stands between me and my happiness can get lost. So, we're over. Whatever. But wait, I still need to come inside. As Kyra's bestie, not as your girlfriend. You might be wondering what kind of relationships I have going on here. Well, I actually befriended Kyra first. We were both ecstatic. Fandom of the statics. If you know, you know. Fangirl's bond is stronger than any friendship. Her mom works for a big press, so she sometimes could even get us access to shows. Cool, right? So I was always around her place. One thing led to another. Me and her brother fell in stupid love, but not anymore. Have you heard about Aaron's new album? Apparently, it will be followed by a group concert right downtown New York. We can ask Kirk to give us a ride. It will be super fun. Oh, don't want to burst your bubble, but I just broke up with Kirk. Four minutes, 36 seconds ago? No way! Yes way! I told her how ridiculous her brother was, but she's still trying to find excuses for him, hoping to mend us back together. But sorry, this heart of mine has casted the dice. It's entirely dedicated to Aaron now. No more, dumb boyfriend. And that's how I ended up taking on this dangerous job. Its high salary could get me boxes of albums and a concert ticket even. But what am I getting instead? My beloved idol arms in arms with a singer I hate the most on earth, Bianca. Aaron and Bianca rushed to the window and dragged me inside. Please don't let anyone know this. What do you want? Autograph? VIP ticket? Please, you probably know our two fandoms are like water and oil. They already opposed us so badly over a collab last time. Yeah, of course I know, because I was the one who opposed. Seriously, what does Erin see in this girl? She always says controversial stuff, gets caught in dating rumors with all guys on Earth, parties 24-7, and her songs suck. But on a second thought, it's not every day to have the two hottest celebrities on their knees before me like this. Maybe I should act wisely. Either way, this is the lifetime opportunity for me stepping into Erin's life, isn't it? Okay, I'll keep a secret on one condition. Let me be the manager of Bianca. Bianca's manager? Who's looking for me? Wait, who are you? But he didn't even bother to wait for my answer and started stacking out bunches of stuff for Bianca to sign. Being a manager ain't a joke. See, Will's been doing this for years and still struggling. Well then, more reason for me to step in. So I walked over to give him a hand. This poster is mid. Next time, let me handle it. Trust me, I've designed countless stuff for fan events. The title track this time is a bop, but without a good promotion, it turned into a flop. I suggest you make some TikTok challenge for it. I'm a girl Bianca's age. I for sure understand her and the fans more than you. I'll be useful. Right, guys? Y yeah sure. She has a point, Will. You do need an assistant. Right then, Will had a phone call. Seemed urgent. After hanging up, he turned to me. Fine. It's true that I'm overloaded. I have to check stuff at the venue right now, but Bianca has schedules at the radio station in an hour. Can you get her there? Sir, yes, sir. Just like that, I helped Will around, and it's safe to say I was basically Bianca's sub-manager. Life was pretty sweet. I got to tag along to shows for free while keeping an eye on my love rival. I sure enjoyed playing God with my new puppet. Everything Bianca eats has to get my approval. Bye-bye, yummy tacos and burgers. She's only allowed to use the phone at certain times of the day. Stop texting boys and start working on your terrible music, honey. Then tell those annoying boys to stop bothering me. Even her sleep is strictly fixed. Just because I love seeing her suffer. <laughs> And I make sure her schedule is packed. Vocal training, dance practice, filming content. Girl, you have a lot to work on. But on days where she worked with the statics, I'd let her off a little. Still, that doesn't mean these two could flirt under my nose. Seriously, it's like you guys are begging to get caught. Think about your future. This dumb fling won't matter a bit the day your career is on the edge of failing, won't it? <laughs> I'd make a good manager, right? But I occasionally saw Liam, another member of Statics, being way too chatty with Bianca. Well, as long as it's not my Aaron. But I know someone who wouldn't like this. Kyra, as Liam's her bias. <laughs> I guess the rumors are true. Liam is a playboy.
And to prevent Aaron from getting caught in the same thing, I accidentally arranged Bianca's schedule to be 100% off with Aaron's, so they couldn't meet up. But Bianca still asked me to bring him gifts often, and surprisingly, Aaron wasn't too upset about his girlfriend not showing up. I guess I can get him in another level that Bianca couldn't. We soon talk a lot and hang out also, and he literally blurted out about how Bianca was so uptight, how some of her annoying habits gave him the ick, and that being with me was so much more comfortable. Uh Uh-oh, sounds like love's fading. (laughs) On the other hand, Bianca was extra upset that they still couldn't date on their anniversary. Not on me, though. Aaron himself didn't want to see her and made excuses about how paparazzi had been up in his grill because he's been doing so well lately. But Bianca has had enough with this all. She wanted to go public. I heard her talking to Aaron on the phone about it. No, that's not gonna happen. I have to be a step ahead. I immediately searched for a photo, then posted it anonymously on a fan forum. If Aaron goes public with anyone, it's gotta be me. But oh boy, maybe I've not thought this through. What was I even thinking? The next day, the internet went crazy and it's all negative comments. Thankfully, Aaron's side has spoken up and calmed it down by fabricating a story about how this was from a long long time ago. And it was his first love, blah, blah. Anything, as long as things go down. I haven't even finished my sigh of relief. Then, out of nowhere, Aaron's stomping into our studio looking furious. R.I.P. me. Bianca, have you lost your mind? I told you I did not agree. Why did you post our photo? Are you trying to sabotage me? Sorry that you don't have a career so you can act careless all you want. But I do. I have my reputation and an army of stupid fangirls to please. I was frozen, as well as Bianca. Right then, a call came from Kyra. I swiftly sneaked out to take it. It's you, right? The lucky girl in the photo? I can tell by just one look. Last time we talked, you only mentioned seeing Bianca in real life or something. When did Aaron come into the picture? How could you not tell me? I was dumbfounded. Didn't know how to handle this. I mumbled out a few words so Kyra would keep this a secret and that we'd talk later. Okay, gotcha. But then help me meet my Liam, please. What? No, trust me. He's a player. They all are. Get over him. So Kyra recognized me that easily. But why Aaron didn't? He even mistook me with his so-called girlfriend, Bianca. That picture was also taken at the secret balcony of his penthouse that he swore he'd never taken anyone there before. Having too much on my mind, I wandered to his place, but ran into... Liam? He's talking to a girl. She wiped her tears, then left. I should get going. Don't want to mess with another player right now. Harper! What? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone about that 400th girlfriend of yours. Correct, it's the 400th girlfriend, but not of mine. Turns out, that girl's also a victim of Aaron the Heartbreaker, not Liam. Liam has always been the one who's cleaning after his mess, making sure the girls are all right and won't do anything harmful to the band's reputation. Probably that's why the public labeled me as the player. I always got caught up with these heartbroken girls. (laughs) And now you... What do you mean? I'm okay. Come on, I know you also got tangled in Aaron's love web. I'm sorry, I could have warned you earlier. I've been trying to hint it to Bianca, but the girl was too head over heels for him. I felt so stupid for thinking I could live that fantasy of being Aaron's girl so easily. All this time, we all blindly put Aaron on a pedestal, while letting Liam be wrongly accused of all the things he never did. Through Liam, I found out that the Statics has been having a problem. Aaron wanted to leave the group because he thought they were a burden and he'd do better on his own. But the rest knew that it would break the fans hard if one of them left, so they've compromised by letting Aaron have a solo album while still staying with the group. Oh no, kick that jerk out now. As a representative of Ecstatic, I can assure you that we won't be sad if we know what an awful person he is. We'll show him the door. Glad to hear that. Now, about Bianca, do you know how to break this to her in the best way? It's hard, but ugly truth is the only way. So the next day, we went to see Bianca together, told her all about how much of a jerk Aaron is, all the girls he's been seeing, all the bad-mouthing about her, he said. Surprisingly, she took it better than we thought. Thank you, too, for looking out for me. I know, I know he's bad, but I thought I'd been able to change him. But yesterday, when he came throwing a fit at me, I realized that I deserved better. Oh, poor Bianca. I really owe her a zillion apologies. I asked Liam to give us a minute and came clean to her on everything. On the photo I posted, on how I intentionally got in between the relationship, on my dumb rules just to get the better of her. I'm truly sorry. I'm just a Tolulu fangirl after all. I'm really sad to hear that because at some point I did consider you a friend, especially your ridiculous roles. It helped me a lot. Look, you kept me on a strict diet, helped me get a healthy sleep schedule, made me practice more, stay off my phone, no more doom scrolling and obsessing over hateful comments. I can assure that you've helped me become a better artist and human overall, even though it's by accident. 
You are seriously too nice. How come I spent all these years hating on you? I'm sorry, and I don't think I should be around here anymore. I'd better go back to my normal life. Take care, Bianca. Bianca gave me a tight hug and said that she hoped I'd still come to her concert next week, as she'd perform the dance number we created together. Mm Mm-hmm. Liam was nice enough to accompany me to Bianca's concert. I did ask Kyra if she wanted to come along, but she was all cranky. Bianca's concert? Are you an ecstatic anymore, Harper? She's our enemy. (laughs) Huh, kiddo. If only she could see past the hate. She could have met her Liam now. The show was going on smoothly. Bianca perfected our dance routine. I was so proud. But as she went to get ready for the next song, a strange VCR got played. I'm a selfish fanatic. A friend's betrayal. A gold digger. A Delulu. And on screen were pictures of me. No! Is this why Bianca insisted I come? Is this her paying back? Or is this Aaron's? Or Liam's? Suddenly, Bianca on the mic snapped me out of the panic attack. Uh, ahem. And I'm all the worst things without your love. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite track from my second album, Here's Without You. Everyone cheered loudly, but a voice behind me took me aback. No, guys! That's not what the video's about! The lunatic is here! This one! Har- Oh my god! Liam! I- Liam quickly shushed her and we dragged her outside. Turned out my dearest sister from another mother did this to me. Why? I hate you. I know everything now. Don't forget who I am. Nothing in this fandom could be hidden from me. You got to befriend the boys, but ghosted me because you want them all to yourself, huh? After everything we've been through, all the shows my mom helped you get in, you bewitched Aaron, sided with Bianca, then called my Liam a player. But look who you're with now. On top of that, you dumped my brother for a stupid reason. The player here is you. This is a mess, and it's really my fault. I should have filled Kyra in on everything sooner. Seeing her right now reminds me of the exact same person I was just last week. The same hot-headed, immature fan. I couldn't blame her. I apologized and told her everything. And with her dearest Liam's help, Kyra, though still mad, started to be more understanding. I love you, and I hope you will soon see things the way I do now. Idols are also humans. They're not all glitters and gold, so we can't expect them to be all perfect, then refuse to see their wrongdoings, or nitpicking trivial things just because it's not up to our expectations. Let's both be a better ecstatic from now, okay? It's been six months since then. I can say that things are definitely for the better now. It's the first performance of the static since they parted ways with Aaron after his real face got exposed. Yes, that happened. Now look, it seems like the crowd has no problem with dumping that troublemaker either. And me? Normally I'd be here as an ecstatic, but not today. I'm now working part-time while studying to get proper certification on talent management. I realized that I did enjoy working with Bianca and I actually had a knack for it, so I'm going to make a career out of it. Now, excuse me, guys. May I get my manager back? It's showtime. Bye! Long idling hours in class finally came to an end. Time to go home and chill. Huh? Are those thugs threatening a girl? Picking on the weak? Such cowards. Oops, she saw me! Now they're all looking at me. As a Muay Thai prodigy, I most definitely will run as fast as I can from danger! It's not me. My legs have a mind of their own. Besides, I stood no chance against those big, scary guys. I might get myself hurt if I tried to help. Then she'd call me a jumpy idiot. Yet, some part of me still wished I could do something. While I was pondering from afar, a guy charged at them out of nowhere, then knocked them all out. Looked like he knew martial arts. Like me. I'm Jamie, by the way, and my story's absolutely normal. Please like and subscribe. I didn't expect to see my dad home this early. Sweetie, you're back already. How's your day? Hi, Dad. All good. It's been just me and my dad since my mom passed away when I was little. He's the best dad I could ask for, but he's shunned by this entire town. He's one of the firefighters who reported to a tragic fire accident around a year ago. They managed to save many lives, but unfortunately there were casualties. After that, the fire department became the town's scapegoat just because they couldn't save everyone. However, I could see better than anyone how much my father had sacrificed. He always covered up his left arm and told me not to tell anybody about it. He considered it part of his job and still felt guilty about that tragedy. More importantly, he taught me to be willing to help others no matter what. Little Jamie did listen to him and was always helpful, but no matter how hard we tried, we still had to endure the townsfolk's woulda, coulda, shoulda nonsense. So I now live by my own rule. Don't be a hero. Hey, it helped Jesse Eisenberg's character survive zombie land, so it'd surely get me through my life. And so the happy little girl now wears a permanent scowl on her face like her armor. Thanks to my tough exterior, no one would ever pick a fight with me or speak badly 
completely about me, at least not to my face. Side effects included having no friends, getting pushed around by teachers, and being brushed off most of the time. You know, the usual cold shoulder. The next day, I was enjoying a good old boring normal day when I suddenly was summoned to the principal's office. For bullying a fellow student? What? Turns out, the damsel in distress yesterday, Betty, reported everything to the principal while conveniently placing me in that gang. I tried explaining myself, but my efforts seemed to be futile. Can't say I'm surprised. Like father, like daughter, I am seriously concerned about my students' safety, especially since street violence reigns in this area lately. Such terrible behavior is even more serious coming from you than those imbeciles. Good heavens, I hadn't even touched a single strand of hair on anyone's head. Oof, she obviously is blaming me simply because I didn't help, but speaking the truth would be like adding fuel to the fire. I believe the proper punishment for you is immediate suspension for two weeks. No, sir, I can't be their accomplice because, because I was going to start a self-defense club for girls. Just like you, I worry a great deal about multiple attacks recently. Therefore, I want to help them be prepared. I, I was trying to recruit Betty, but she was surrounded by so many of them while I was all alone. That's like fighting a losing battle. I actually ran away so I could, um, report them to you. Betty must have mistaken me for one of them. My gibberish speech went on for a good while before he finally let me go. I had to bluff my way through as many questions. Where does the club take place? When? How many members? And since he said he'd come by sometimes, I actually had to create a self-defense club and begin recruiting. The first day of the club, only a few girls came. Fine, I don't have much care for this stuff anyway. It's merely an excuse for me to be let off the hook. I grabbed the two tallest girls, then asked them to demonstrate a couple moves so the rest could follow their lead. When an assailant strikes, cross your wrist to trap his arms. Jump and boom! Boom. Yeah, boom. Did I do that right, Jamie? Jamie? Yes, yes, uh, that's it. Uh, don't be lazy, okay? Then I got back to scrolling on my phone and saw that Betty had gone public about the incident. Even someone as indifferent as me could see how much sympathy and attention Betty got after that. Her story's influence went beyond the internet when our school launched a No Bullies Allowed campaign and chose her to be the spokesperson. However, they could only propose outdated and ineffective measures, like always traveling in groups, bringing pocket knives or pepper spray, or giving in to not get any serious injury. None of which really helped, and more students fell victim. A few days later, right before English class, I saw the Good Samaritan that day. He's Aaron and transferred from another school in the area. Come to think of it, he's quite a heartthrob, which got all the girls all riled up. Do you have a girlfriend? What's your type? Sexy, cool, nerdy. I know, nice and sweet? Yes, yes. Oh, Mr. Bernardi's here. As usual, Mr. Bernardi began the lesson with a pop quiz. Today's topic was Hamlet. Okay, I knew this one. What's the play about, Teddy? Um, uh, a guy named Hamlet? Good, B+. Plus. Any other idea? Jamie? The play works on many levels. It's about Prince Hamlet's family conflict, their politics, how he can't make up his mind about duties, moral codes, and... Stop! F. You're reading too much into it. Well, I should have seen that coming. You suck. What did you say, Aaron Taylor? I said, aw, uh, shucks. Wow, this guy's so much more than just a pretty face. When class was over, I came to thank him and even got his socials. He's a super handsome guy with a voice of an angel who defended me. I think I got, well, you know. Hmm, let's see what his social says about his type. Oh, Betty seemed to be getting more and more support, huh? I guess people have more compassion for delicate little flowers like her. <sighs> wow, nice. I had zero chance then. Suddenly, I heard a commotion outside, then peeked out to see my father dealing with rude neighbors. Man, I can't live the life of the local doormat anymore. If so, I had to change first. I can be like her. All right, starting today, call me Dainty Jamie? Ugh. I'll figure something out, but my life will surely be different. Aaron, your girlfriend is coming. I'll certainly need a new look to go with my new personality. The princess diary would be the perfect tutorial. First, I have to look like a princess. So I replaced my sneakers, hoodies, and t-shirts with high heels, short skirts, and all things pink and glittery. Of course, cute accessories are a must. Ting! But it would be lying if I said this new style was comfy. This morning, my long hair got caught in a keychain on my backpack. It was impossible to untangle, so I had to cut off a chunk of hair. You know what they say, pain is beauty. I went to school in my new style, and the moment I set foot in the building, people stared at me like I was an alien. Then the mocking began. Look who's talking. Last time I saw something like you, I flushed. Oh dear, that wasn't very ladylike.
So I decided to change my tone to sound posh and even learned how to sit, stand, and pick up dropped items elegantly. Greetings, Mrs. Allen. Can I have mashed potatoes and beans, please? What's that? Speak up, young lady. I'm sorry. Can someone be a doll and help, please? But they just looked at me all judgy. <sighs> Stay calm. A lady doesn't panic. I slowly sat down with poise, but someone already picked up my tray. Aaron! He's freaky fast. Being a helpless pretty girl sure is nice. Jamie, you look different. <laughs> I've always looked like this, silly. Since then, we started having lunch together. I felt safe around him because he's new here and didn't know about my past. We gradually became close as we've had many things in common, like martial arts. I really wanted to let my geek flag fly high, but had to hold back. Still, it didn't mean he's used to the current me. Like, he'd not understand that I was trying to eat gracefully. Are you a slow eater or just picky? Give it to me. I was saving it for last. Also, he often brought me honey and lemon candy. Sweet! But that's because he thought my soft voice came from a sore throat. Erin, I was looking for you everywhere. Come, I want to show you something cool. Uh, we're kinda in the middle of something. Why are you always with her? Let me tell you, her father- Come here, you have to see this. What is it? Uh, well, um, flowers. Yeah, flowers. Aren't they pretty? You're weird. Like, in a good way. But weird. <laughs> Are you trying to hide an earth-shattering secret? Like, your true self? Am I wrong? No way. What else can I be but myself? You watch too many movies. <laughs> to keep up my fair lady appearance, I shouldn't come to the Fight Girl Club so frequently. Since the principal wasn't breathing down my neck anymore, I hadn't been there for the past two weeks. Meanwhile, I tried to talk to Aaron more often. He's very nice. A bit too nice, as in he literally took pleasure in helping others. Today, although we're supposed to walk home together, Aaron canceled at the last minute because, so sorry, Betty needed someone to walk her home, and today none of her friends could. How are you always in the mood to help people? Don't know. It's fun, I guess. Aren't you afraid your kindness will be taken for granted, or getting you into trouble one day? Like my, well, never mind. Have fun. I'll make it up to you. Bye. I'm fine with that. It just stings because it's Betty. Actually, Aaron wouldn't think twice about assisting a complete stranger, let alone a classmate. Was I even a little bit special in his eyes? I want to come clean to him, yet I'm afraid that will only make him distrust me and leave me like everybody else. This uncertain hell is driving me insane. I'll ask him out to clear things up. Ugh. Just a dumb text from my self-defense club. Delete! Eek! He said yes! That's a good sign. Sunday came, and after we bought our tickets, we saw a girl struggling with dozens of grocery bags. Oh, that's Pooja from school. Erin hurried over to help with the bags. We had some time before the movie started. We walked her back and found out that she's volunteering at a soup kitchen for homeless people. Thanks so much. You two are here anyway. Want to join us? We always need some help here. What? Free labor? No, Absolutely, no sorry. problem. We got tickets to a movie, right, Aaron? I don't think it's too late to change our plan, though. I had to pull him aside immediately. Aaron, what if we're too helpful so they keep us here until late? If not, we'll get yelled at. And if we leave early, they'll have something else to say. I don't know. Maybe this isn't a good idea. Come now. So complicated. Just flat out say you don't want to help. Don't be ridiculous. It's our date, and we shouldn't let it go to waste. I'm ridiculous? Okay, but at least I'm not selfish and conceited. You don't want to feed the homeless? I'll stay and give them a hand. You can leave. Hey, what's the matter with you? Don't think you're better because you help everyone you see. Oh, so now we're being honest? Fine, my turn. I didn't listen to what everyone said about you and still became your friend. Turns out they're all right after all. Like father, like daughter. What are you talking about? You... You you knew everything? Yeah, I'm not dumb. And that's not all. Now I finally believe my dad died in that fire because of your dad's negligence. Then he stormed off, leaving me stunned. I could see he rolled up his sleeves and began happily working, while I was left out here with my heart broken. 